Okay, welcome guys to another day with Zendler. So uh, what we're going to do today, we've got an action packed day for you. Uh, we've got me talking about the educational areas and stuff. And then we've got um, Kevin uh, coming on and he's going to be talking, you know, he does all the blogs and marketing and everything else. So he's going to be talking about some cool stuff. He's not telling me what yet. And then we have our newest member to Zenla. So Liz Clifton is now with us at Zenla and she'll be running some stuff. We're not going to talk about it yet till we set it all up. But Liz will be coming on at 11 to introduce herself and also be talking about her subjects as well. So we've got lots of stuff going on today. Uh, we've got Andrew in. Good to see you, Andrew. Good to see you, Jackie. Jackie made it. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to cover the education area. There's a few things I want. This is kind of like, for me, this is an extended session. We cover education in office hours, but this is an extended um, part of it because it's really important that you have the educational resources and you know where everything is. And this is a, a big thing for us to make life easier. So course creation is, if you're just starting off in course creation, or even if you, you've got into it and you're kind of an intermediate level, you'll realize that um, course creation is a bit like a bowl of spaghetti pasta. You know, it's um, <laughs> it can be, when you come into it, you can be really confused and it can seem like a big bowl of spaghetti dropped on the floor and you rapidly picking bits up to put it into the thing stay with me it will get on track in a minute but the thing you need to remember is once you cook your pasta and you put it in your bowl then it becomes a dish and it becomes your site or your course so um yeah so that's my little analysis on that so sort of take that socrates that's kind of the thing so <laughs> so um that's what it's like so we at zenla are trying to make life as easy as possible for you so we set up all these educational resources where you can get all the help you need and a few little other things put in so I'm going to just run through our educational resources so good to see you Gabriel so um, Gabriel so good uh, to see you here so I can see there's people Heather's in as well good to see you Heather so uh, yeah all of you have been posting good old questions on the Facebook group um, hopefully uh, we've answered so those or the community has we've got a fabulous community here everybody helps each other we pride ourselves uh, and it's kind of like you've created that so it's really good it takes a lot of stress off of us because lots of questions are already answered by you guys that are actually using the platform and that's what we want it's a platform designed you know really by you guys you know you ask for the features to go in there um, we talk about your problems and we talk about how we can work around problems if some of those features aren't in there and all this thing and it leads to a beautiful community and that's how we like it to stay okay no um, no bad talk on the group so uh, it's all good so let me jump into the resources and just take you through a few things because we have got a few new things come out but I'm going to talk about that in a second so if you go to tutorials.newzenda.com I'm just going to flick up I'm looking at the chat now and again I want to make sure that you understand that with a day with Zenla we do answer questions as well and that's probably our priority in lots of cases so we have a syllabus that we run through we've got key speakers in but we do try and answer all the questions because that's what initially a day was in was set up for uh q a sessions throughout the day but it's changed into something a bit bigger um so let me just share my screen now and we're just going to walk through the areas so let's start with our biggest area which is a tutorials.newzenla.com site so if you've not been to this site before, if you're new to Zenla, or if you haven't signed up for any of the courses, really, really need to do that. It's really important. So when you go to tutorials.newzenla.com and you'll see that there, I'm just gonna put that into the chat for any of you that haven't seen it. Because uh, we do get still get people that have been on the platform for a long time, not even realize about the tutorial site. So it's really important you understand. And in here, we show the latest new releases that we've got out. This has got a we've actually got a new release come out, Bulk Actions, that I will talk about later throughout the day. Um, but these are the latest features that have dropped in here. We also show you all the challenges that are going on. You can see that Kevin run the hugely successful five day blogging challenge and the successful launch your first course challenge as well. And he's run those ones now, but I think you can still sign up for them and watch the replays. 
when we do anything, when we do any lives, uh, especially challenges and things, we do turn them into courses. So it means that there are replays. So you can always go back and watch the replays. And the one that uh, me and Alice did here was market your first course challenge. So it's a short five day challenge and it's really easy to um, get into there. So um, yeah, so I need to change that text because it's wrong. So the latest one we've got coming up, which is coming up on the 7th of March, and that is the YouTube challenge. Now this is a three day challenge. Okay, it's a lot to do in three days, but it is for basic levels. So it's setting up, but people have said, oh, well, I've got 5,000 subscribers. So is it gonna be benefit me? Um, I would say yes, because you're looking at it from someone else's point of view on how to set your channel up properly. You know, you might have a lot of subscribers, but you might not have set your channel up properly and you might find there's tips and tricks to speed things up. So I like to give it from my experience on this. And we do have people comment and stuff, so that might go into the next re re reinvention of this YouTube challenge when we run it again. So you really wanna get into that because it's really good. Again, you can sign up for it. You can watch the replays later if you want to. So you don't have to be live. Uh, we are running this at four o'clock in the afternoon, GMT time. And uh, it, the actual lies probably run for about half an hour because there's pre-recorded content in there that you homework that you need to do with the goal of producing a video and what we're trying to do and how to SEO and all of these sort of things. Um, so we cover all that plus channel setup and upload defaults, you know, what words to use, how to style your descriptions in the YouTube channel so it looks fabulous, you know. So how to set up playlists, there's lots and lots of little tips. Plus there's a PDF handout sheet that goes with this as well. If you're in the course, you can download it. So you get that as well to look through later. And of course you can always go back to it. We are going to, at some point, not right now, but maybe in three months time, we're gonna enroll and unenroll everybody through it um, using new bulk actions. And uh, we will then re do it and new people can come in and we might upgrade it a little bit and those sort of things. But that is our YouTube challenge. So I really, it's quite popular at the moment. I think we've got about 400 people in it. Um, so <laughs> let's see how that goes. So uh, it's not locked off or anything. So we'll see, see how it goes. Um, but um, if you can't get in on the lives because it's full, um, then you can always watch on the replays. Okay, guys. So make sure you click book now, book now. Uh, and that's running on the 7th of March. So it'll run on the 7th. 8th, 9th, and we might do a bonus day on the 10th, we're not sure yet. Me and Alice are running that one again, so it's our joint challenge. We really liked um, the co-hosting way, and it's nice to have female and male, you know, it balances the, the, um, the karma out kind of thing. So um, yeah, so that's gonna be our YouTube challenge, and I really think you're gonna like it. Andrew signed up for it. Yeah, I think Jackie signed up for it as well. Heather sign up for it. Um, yeah, so that's good. That's going to be a really good one. You're going to like it. It's quick to the point. You know, we're not going to ramble on. You can just get on with it and um, get the results. And we tell you why you're doing everything. This is the one important thing, I think, with course creations. It's it's all very, I've done many, many, many courses. And I've been in courses where people, and this happens a lot, where people just do things like do this, do that, do this, do that. But they don't actually explain why. You need to know why you're doing something so that you can think outside the box later. Otherwise, you're basically following like a, a step process of doing stuff. And some people like that but it doesn't allow you to grow, you know? So I think you need to, that's something that's really important, even with you creating your courses. So we got latest live events. Obviously we run office hours, like um, that's every Wednesday, alternate times, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. We've got live uh, workshops. I run these on Sundays, and these are 10 a.m. at the moment. And we're, got, we're quite far in there, so join that. That is actually a course, so you can watch the replays. We cover everything in that. We cover from the very start right the way through. And then we've got live build. So occasionally um, I'll pick someone or I'll have a submission to do a live build to basically show someone how to do their kind of homepage or it might be showing how to do branding or design techniques, these kind of things. 
Uh, it's a really cool area. You also find these live builds on our YouTube channel, which we'll look at in a minute. Next, we've got a day with Zendler. So if you're here, welcome. Uh, day with Zendler is last Friday of each month and it runs nine to 12. And then we have a second session of three till six, okay? And on today's um, live, Day with Zendler, again, I've already said education area, Kevin, Liz in session one. Session two, we've got Alice uh, talking about uh, cool social stuff, okay? Um, she's our social guru on Facebook. So we also have Marcy coming in and she's in to tell us about her sell to corporations and other organizations so this is really cool this is really good I'm, I'm going to be interested in this one because it's selling to um, actual organizations and, and things like that so this will be quite an interesting one I think and then we're gonna we're back to me 16 30 to 18 so an hour and a half so we've got quite a lot to do today and we're looking at live lessons in courses and how it works and I'll also be showing you a few other things as well. Again, you know, throughout the day, we're gonna have Q and A's. If they come in the chat, um, I can talk to their Bergier's in. Good to see you, Bergier. And Jackie's looking forward to the challenge as well. So uh, yeah, it's, we try and make it all very consumable as well. So it's really easy for you to understand everything we're talking about. We don't use jargon, acronyms, or anything else like that. We, um, we're very much, uh, we go for plain English, very simplified stuff so that it makes it easy for you to understand. And sometimes that's quite hard, um, especially if you're talking about things like um, domain setups and things like that, because you have to use the wording and it kind of throws people. So um, we try and do that. Uh, we don't always succeed, but we try. So next we've got the NZ Masterclass bundle um, here. And if you are on tutorials.newzena, you need to sign up for this. Um, it's really easy to sign up. I'm gonna go back to this in a second to just walk you through it. And next we've got the NZ, the NZ Zenla, <laughs> NZ Zenla feature list, the matrix. So this is our uh, paid uh, plan comparison sheet. So if you guys are on the free plan or even the pro or the premium, uh, if you wanna check what is available on each platform, you can just go into this comparison sheet and have a look. And then we have our competitor comparison matrix as well. This has been updated fairly recently, but I still need to double check a few things because I think we're doing lots of stuff that other platforms are not. We like to lead the way in these things. Um, by the way, also Zen has been around pretty much, it's older than most of the other teaching platforms that you've probably looked at. So um, we're not, you know, we're not new to this. We've been doing this for a long time. Okay, the first iteration, and we redesigned it from the from the ground upwards, um, just uh, to base it more around the marketing, which is the biggest pain point that uh, instructors, new instructors face when they're launching their membership or their courses. So that's how a little bit about the history and things like that. Maybe I can get Rakesh to come on next uh, month and talk about the, um, how it all started and things like that, because it's quite interesting. So let's now just go to this, the NZ Masterclass Bundle, which is our flagship course. This basically contains multiple courses inside here. So we've made it easy for you. Yes, we have all these workshops and courses running here, but this is where our static courses are that are you can work through. And you can see we've divided this into four zones. So we've got a Zenla Learn. This is where you should start. Once you've learned, you then mark it. And then if you've got any extras that you want to find out about, Zendla extras, and of course, any of the boot camps up here that we finished or challenges, go into Zendla boot camps. So it kind of follows this order that you should be working through. So if I just quickly enroll into this course, show you how quick it is to enroll into this, um, if I use an email address, let's just enroll into this course, click continue. Enroll for free, and it's as simple as this. You'll get an email saying you've enrolled, so thank you for signing up, you're enrolled. And now I can enter my zones. So now I'm in here, you can see it's gonna ask me to finish my registration up. So I'm just gonna put, and put a password in here, and submit. And that's it. So now I'm in here, I can now access all of the content. 
Now you're going to see if you go to enrolled courses, you're going to see that you can see all the courses that you have been enrolled into and you can see there's a lot of them. Um, to make it life really easy, we put it into these zones so you can just enter these. They still access these same courses, but just through these little zone areas. So if we go into Learn Zenla um, here, we always say definitely start with the quick start guide. It's going to take you maybe four hours, five if you're taking it really easy just um, do a little bit each day and then just absorb it and this takes you through all the basics so it's all the basic stuff you need to know to set your first course up and your uh, site as well it's a bit like launch your first site challenge course challenge and site challenge in one um, it gives you a ground in it will mean that your sites are ready to rock and roll um, you can also download at the same time the basic setup checklist. This is just a PDF that you can print out and you can tick off. Tick off that you've done the things that we require you to do. Um, we have optional things in there that you can do as well. So the quick start guide is nice and easy to start with and it will build your confidence as well with the platform. We work with it. You can see it's getting prepared for site creation. So we don't just talk about the platform. We talk about what you should be doing before you touch the platform. Then we have a quick tour around Zenla. So we just tour around all the major things in Zenla. And then setting up your first Zenla site. We testing as a student, which we say is the most important thing before you launch. Getting prepared for course creation. So again, we talk about what you should be doing. Okay, and then you go into this, setting up your first course, you create your first course, testing the course again, and then should I do anything else, where to go from here, and serious about online career, so we upgrade into pro and premium, so if you're on the free plan, because even free users get access to all of this information for absolutely free, so if you are a free user, you can see what the benefits of going to pro or premium, and the next step, which is the masterclass bundle. So at the bottom, you're gonna find, again, you can jump back to the zones really easily. And then we have what's called the Complete Guide to Zenla. It's huge, guys, it's absolutely huge. I know a lot of you have already been in there. So Gabriel's loving the uh, support. <laughs> we try. Yeah, so Andrew wants to hear a little bit more about the history as well. Yeah, I think um, it'd be good to get Rakesh on talking about how it all developed because I think you'd be surprised in all the different areas and things. So down here, the complete guide, this is absolutely huge, but we've made it really easy. We've got searchable videos in here. These are hosted on our Searchy uh, site, So it, but it doesn't do it in order. So if you're experienced, you'll come in here and use the search feature because you already know the platform and you're just recapping maybe. Uh, what I suggest if you're new to it is to actually watch the whole um, section. So you'll see that we've introduced it into here, basics, the page builder, which is what we use to create our designs, our pages or our funnels or our live pages. It's all done using the same editor, which is the page builder. So we spend a bit of time on that. And we also then go on to features of the page builder, so extra features, uh, course creation part one. So it's all about, it's broken down like how to add audio, how to add PDF. Some of them are short, like a minute long, the videos. It's just to show you how to drop those in and how you see them. So we cover all of that. Then we go testing. So we cover a bit more on testing and the difference between free and pro premium plans. So you know what's going on. Course creation part two, of course creation is massive area we also talk about membership sites as well a lot of you are not just doing your standard courses but you want to create a membership style site and what you're looking at here in Zenla is a membership style site it's got it's kind of a hybrid because we've got the membership style using those zones but we've also got challenges that we run in the courses in the my courses as well so it's kind of a hybrid between the two but you see how these pages, even though it's multiple courses, see how these pages are all interlinked by that block, like the Learn Zen that's got the quick start guide, the basic checklist, the complete guide, we've got the marketing zone. You know, they all link up inside there, creating a membership style feel about it. So we talk about how that's created in this creating a membership site, where we show lots of different studies. We look at one page membership sites. We look at bundled membership sites. We look at tiered membership sites where tier would be one course that you can break sections up and charge different prices for different sections of that 
one course so tiered membership as well and we also cover things like selling although Zenlu is not for selling physical or digital products as such you can do it so we do show you how you could do it in here okay there is no shipping options in there so you need to include that in your cost but I know a lot of you guys are already selling stuff you know you're already doing things um, another way of doing it is if for instance you've got a maybe you've got a dog dog training um, course or something and you might want to sell people like a, a whistle or a clicker or a, a dog collar you could include that as an initial fee so they pay an initial fee and then maybe it's 25 pound a month after that so they pay like 50 pounds for the kit then 25 pound for the membership a month so it'd be 75 pound the first initial fee plus the, the subscription and then from that point on it would be 25 pound a month so you could do it that way as well that's what i love about zen that you're always thinking of new ideas um which is great um just means there's a lot of videos <laughs> so, uh, so now we've got setting up custom and subdomain this is probably the biggest problem for people because it it's it's not something that we can kind of, um, we, we show you videos on how to do it with Namecheap or GoDaddy, but it's, it is on your host, whoever you register, or whoever you bought the um, custom domain from, you need to change things on that, and then it goes off platform. And because people are buying from so many different hosts and registrars, um, it's impossible to do videos for all of them. So we do show you the popular ones like GoDaddy, I use CNAME in there, I think we've got a Namecheap one as well. So we show you the um, standard ones and there's always people in the group that can help you as well. So we've also cover here media library and media in general. So about it all. Then we move on to after you've finished all that area, you're on to engagement. So engagement and nurturing is how to uh, keep your existing subscribers or students engaged and nurtured inside your course which is a really big thing. They feel loved, um, they feel that you're paying attention to them and they stay with you and they maybe buy more courses from you. It's just a knock-on effect. And then we have engagement, nurturing, and communication with com communities and discussions because we do have built-in communities and we do have discussions. Communities is going to be completely revamped. We've uh, talked about this for a long time, but it is a very big job and we've got other big jobs to do before it. So we can't get onto it until it's done. I know that pops up in the Facebook group all the time, but it's just a matter of uh, just have to do what you have to put one thing in place before you do the next thing. And this is how we work. Is it like building a house? You need to put the foundations down before you build the garage on top, before you build the house on top. Um, and to, you can't just build the garage without a foundations because it would fall apart. And that's exactly what we do. So when we're taking time on certain things that are coming out like communities, it's only because we need to build foundations for something else first that will have a knock-on effect if we do not. So this is the reason that we... Um, maybe seem to be taking a long time with something is that other big things are happening as well so we've got engagement and nurturing we've got forms as well how forms work and then we move into marketing so this is really really important section it's about how to use all of the marketing tools and there's substantial amount of marketing tools inside Zenla and you can see that we have loads of that stuff marketing 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 because it's you know it's a marketing centric platform so then we have integration. So I go through how to integrate. I don't go into a lot of detail, just so you, to show you how to connect up with things like ConvertKit, MailerLite, those sort of things. Um, and final thoughts, what's coming next. So with this, this is massive course. We do have lots of search options inside the Complete Guide to Zenla. It's worth pointing out. Um, inside here to look at the sections, we have this uh, quick finder. So if I was to type something like in here, funnel, funnels, and then click OK, you're going to see that um, anything, any mention of the word funnel as I scroll through here will be highlighted in red. So it makes it easy for you to find, okay? So you can use that to quickly find the information. We also have an expanded section. This gives you more search capabilities because it contains the description for each of the words. So instead of saying external integration calendar booking, it actually goes into a lot more detail. Um, and it looks big, but it's actually the same content as before. But if you come down the bottom, it um, gives you more information on that stuff. So it gives you lots more 
keywords to search on for the search result. So that is our complete guide to Zenla. And I'm going to now move into the Zenla marketing zone. Uh, if you haven't done it already, if you've got your course and you're ready to go to market, you've tested everything and everything's working, uh, definitely go in and take the Zenla marketing, the basic marketing. It'll teach you the basics of how to look for keywords and all these things, how to SEO your pages. It's really, really the most important part once you've got your course and site done. You need to come into here and watch this if you don't know about marketing. Okay, it's not a huge course, but it is quite an in-depth course. All right, so next I'm going to jump into the Zenla Extra area. And inside here we have, these are normally courses that have been asked by you guys. So you, you've you asked for this um, and you've asked for like, how do you um, maybe take my WordPress site? How do you make that into a Zenla site? How do you... Um, what about branding and design? Yeah, I'm not a designer. How, how do I start? So we talk about really easy, simple ways for you to get into branding and design. And, you know, without any design experience at all, you can get a good looking site by following certain principles. principles. One of those principles is branding, your logo, get a nice logo done, get some colors, put a branding sheet, choose your font, put a branding sheet together, keep it consistent. They're the four main things. So if you do that inside your site using consistent colors with your brand, choosing fonts that are consistent, so the same sizes, don't alter those sizes around throughout the page, then you'll have a nice looking site without any design skills at all, okay? And you can drop nice images in that look good and you'll be starting straight away. So branding and design, really, really important. Next, uh, a lot of people have problems with hardware and software. So we have a hardware and software. This is stuff that we use here um, to give us the results we need. And all of us, the education team, we're all course creators. We've all been doing this professionally. So it's not like we're just coming in and we just know the platform. No, no, we actually run our own businesses outside of Zenla. So understand that it is from a professional point of view. Okay. So if I go into the hardware software, we've got some cool things in here as well. I don't know if you guys have been in here, but we got some, um, it's not a big course. You can see it's not a big course at all, but you can see my hardware set up in here. And uh, I've put some cool things all done in Zenla. And we got here, the lighting set up. This is for this one here. And down here, I've even got a little turntable. Look, eee, done in 3D, all in Zenla, really easy. So uh, this is a nice little course to watch if you don't understand any of that. And again, you can jump around back to here because you've always got that little block. Next, we've got uh, live workshops. So these are live workshop replays. I need to add a few more to here because I've left quite a few out. And next we have an advanced ninja trick. So you can do a lot of very, very powerful things inside Zendler and it's not that hard. You know, people get afraid. It is does require coding, requires things called CSS and maybe some HTML and things. But it's um, what we're looking at with advanced ninja tricks is, or I call it advanced. It's kind of advanced for people that don't do this. Um, it's very simple bits of changing code and things just to make logos bigger. You can do some amazing things with it. It's worth checking out. Lots of people that have got no tech experience at all go into this and they go oh that was easy that was really easy to do that maybe they want a sticky menu they don't want the menu to, to to scroll up as you scroll down the page they just want it to stay in one place that's in ninja tricks a couple of pieces of code throw it into the site bang it works so um, definitely worth having a look and remember you can't break it because you put the code in it doesn't work you just remove the code save it you're back to where you started so you don't need to get worried about any of this stuff yeah so next we have zen the theme pack so you guys really wanted to um have some theme packs for certain things like some netflix style sites um some ctas and like business look and sort of vibrant fun uh, templates so we included these little theme packs this is a very temporary thing because we're bringing out page builder 2.0 and inside that, we're going to have the ability to bring in whole site templates, like one click changes the site to that theme. And that's going to be updated regularly. So there's going to be new themes and 
page and block things coming out all the time and it will really replace this but in the meantime we just thought we'd get it out there to you because some people were using but i know people have used these we've got like things like um uh form blocks in here so we've got inline form blocks you can preview them all here okay you can just click here to preview what it looks like you can see there's some of the blocks there so like an inline one it's, you can just choose these blocks change out the background make it look how you like um, and you can download them here and I give full instructions here on exactly what to do so what they're for downloading the packs pretty quick video just hit here and uh, installing the packs the blocks customizing the theme so I even show you how to customize some of those inside as well so that's nice installation videos on these theme packs and we also got down here troubleshooting the blocks as well so uh, further down here we've got also certifications so you can actually and I know a question was asked in the Facebook recently about how to they were someone was looking for someone to design an SVG file for them to actually um, produce their own certificate so we show you how you can customize and edit your own certificates inside here or you can download these ones that we've already created for you that are different to the certificates that come with Zendla so this is quite a good area you can download and install links download the font packs um, everything's in here font packs for for changing the, the styles in the page and those sort of things so we've got you covered on that thing but this will be replaced eventually because it's all going to come into this new update that we're going to release uh, later so that is our Zenla extras area quite a cool area to go into uh, next one is our Zenla boot camps now we added a new one we added our five day launch your first course marketing challenge a bit of a mouthful and um, this is this is me and Alice here and I know Kevin's got his five day business blogging boot camp in here as well so definitely worth checking these out again this is just a quick look at marketing if you want to know a little bit more go to Zenla marketing uh, zone and go into the basic marketing there and that will then help you I think so that's really easy to log into now do remember that if you're going into any of the live live classes that we've got uh, running like this one here this is not part of the NZ Masterclass bundle so to join that challenge you'll need to come into there and you'll need to take the challenge and it's just going to go enroll for free and then what will happen is you'll see that appear so it's going to go into this one this is the one that's running on the 7th and you can go into that course and there's the course there this course actually has been done quite differently to, to the way you might see most Zendler courses you've got a pop up here to say you're going to the lives and I'll be talking you through this stuff um, later at the end I think I'm coming on at 4.30 and I'll be talking about how this was created because a lot of you are interested in it so this is the that challenge so now if I then logged out and log back in I just go to enroll courses and there it is there so I jump into it it's not part of this zone areas it's a self-contained course eventually it will go into here but not at this time so what else have we got on the tutorial site there's a lot going on in here you can see you've got um, support here so if you click the support you're going to go to our support documents at, uh, at um, Zenla and you can type and search for articles normally a lot of these articles have got um, there's Rakesh popped up so uh, yeah so a lot of these articles have got videos built into them from our YouTube channel which we'll talk about in a minute so you can go straight to support there um, you can also have your say so we really love you guys to um, actually give us feedback so we've got um, workshop survey or feedback welcome so any of the workshops we're running if you give us some feedback it'd be brilliant you can also join us for a day with Zenla so if you want to come on like Marcy is today you can fill that out we'll get in touch with you and if it's a subject that's going to help the community and um, you can come on so we've got 9 to 12 GMT time we've got 3 to 6 GMT time and you can book a slot for any of those and then you'll be invited to come on 
And it's really good because you get a chance to show people what you do. Um, people get to see you and your personality. And, you know, you can network with people and people are, will know you on the platform more. It's nice that you come on and you, you, do, you help people in the Facebook group. But it's actually really nice to see you and, um, you know, see what a lovely person you are. And it all comes across. So it's a beautiful thing, I think. So that's Join Us for a Day with Zendler. We got educational support. So how are we doing? So how are we doing with this educational support? So these all go through to forms and you can go on there and you can just fill out these quick survey forms. Doesn't take long at all. Uh, but this feedback for us is really important. It just means that we, going forwards, if you're saying you want something, it might get included in the educational side, not on a new feature. Okay, so uh, there's a difference. We also have resources here. We have a lot of resources. We have links to a Zenla new feature request. This is where you can ask for new features. You've got Facebook announcements. So this takes you straight to our Facebook group and the announcement tabs where we put announcements up. Kevin keeps that in order. It's about six months of content. It's very clear. We also have the Facebook events as well. So any events that are coming up, like the YouTube challenge or anything, then they all appear in the kind of events or a day with Zendler. We also have our senders. These are on our YouTube chat. These are on our, um, these are on our, cheap. where does it go? Let me have a look, forgotten. Oh, the, these are quick, quick ones that we did here. This might get replaced soon actually. And these are quick videos in here showing you our senders. But this is, this content is all on our YouTube channel now. So down here, uh, we have PR Media. So you guys that are partners and are selling the platform through your partner link, you might wanna go into the PR Media because we have a lot of media on there for you guys to use uh, to promote or to get people to sign up for Zenla through the link. We also have a Zenla status page. So um, we can see what's going on. All, all the systems are operational. So you can see if anything's going wrong with any of the operational systems. Uh, with here such as Vimeo or blogs, quizzes, surveys, if Cloudflare's uh, messed up or any of those. So it gives you a way of seeing. So if, you, if your site doesn't work for any reason, definitely go and check out the status.newzenla.com. Gives you that status. And uh, we have the NZ change log. So these are, this, most of this will be gobbledygook to you. Um, if you're logged in on Facebook, you'll see that come up. And it tells you about all the latest things that have gone in, maybe like bulk actions will be on there. Any minor tweaks and bugs or fixes that maybe you've reported have been fixed and they're in there as well. So that's a kind of look at all of those things live as they're going on. Now we have the paid plan comparison. We looked at that, it's down the bottom of the tutorials.newzenla.com page and we have the competitors comparison. Um, submit your site. Uh, we have a support bug support report a bug tech issue that's a mouthful so that is going to our support so you can find out how to send a bug uh, um, a report about anything a bug with the system that you think uh, generally what you do is you just send it to support at zenla.com and that's it support at zenla.com and then the, it was it was assign a ticket number and then the development team will look at it they will fix it or they will tell you what you need to do to sort that problem out. Uh, next we have, and this is a big one, submit your site. So we have a site called showcase.newzenla.com. And inside here, we have you, you guys, we have all your site submissions. So uh, lots of you are doing it. I think we're up to about 74 at the moment. And uh, you can just go through here and you can submit your site to be on the showcase. I'm going to go to the showcase site now to show you because it's starting to fill out. It's starting to look good now. Uh, we didn't have many to start with, but this is the showcase.newzenla.com site. And why is it good to go on here? Hi, Tony. Tony's in Turkey. Why is it good to go on the showcase site? Two reasons. We have a lot of people asking, can I see sites that have been created in Zenla? And we, you know, you asked for this ages ago, like, can we have a place where we put all our sites so we're showcasing on what we do? So we took that on board and we thought, well, it'd be good to actually create a whole site that's based around that. This is all done in Zenla and uh, we've done that. So we've got lots of sites on here. 
we've got a showcase uh, sector so you can see so if you're a therapist or something you can go into the therapist section and you can see some of the therapist sites I know we've got a ton more so I'm expecting a real push of sites to come through and you can see all the different sites that have been done I've got the crimson cats they are always on the lives and uh, you can click and visit their sites here so you can see their sites in action so if I go to the crimson cats for instance you can see that they've got their site all again done in Zen that you can see what they've done which is really good so why is this good for you it's good for two reasons one is you're contributing to the community by letting them people see what's been done with the Zen the platform and uh, how they've made it work for them uh, the other thing is it gives you a backlink so it gives a backlink from showcase.newzenda.com to your website that's going to help you in any of your rankings so if you get your site on here you've got a free backlink you know people charge money for backlinks uh, from our New Zealand site so it's a very good place to go so if you are on showcase.newzenda.com you can submit your site here as well so you can go to there um, you'll also if you want to look at the Zen the features this is mainly for SEO if people turn up on this page they can see all the features that Zen has and the pricing plans but our main areas are all in here so you can see we've got business and marketing sites um, I think my sites in here I'm not sure it's in the right section um, but I think my sites in here tech and design and coaching more sites so loads of sites are being added and it's starting to look really nice because uh, we're starting to get all these lovely sites appearing in here. Look how different they all are. Absolutely amazing. It's just really nice to see all the different colours going on in the sites. And um, yeah, you guys are doing an amazing job with some of these sites, um, for sure. Uh, I also, like, if I see a site and I think it could be better, I might well reach out to you and just give you some tips, or I might even do it on a live build. So I might be using some of these sites. I might actually be contacting you and saying, you could do this, you could do that. So it's somewhere where I look and I see how the sites are working responsively and these sort of things. And if I do spot any um, troubles, I do generally get in touch with you. Um, so if you get an email from me saying, I've looked at your site and there's a problem, then you know why. Uh, we like to be very hands-on with this kind of stuff. So that is our showcase sites there. Right, so... Uh, Tony's put put our put our site on showcase and had a message asking how we done bit how we done bit how we done bits all oh, right okay was that from me it might have been from me right so Marilyn you know where to go just go on there submit it and then you're in there and remember guys you know if you want to come on a day with Zendler you know where to go you can just go to our our page and go on a day with Zendler. If you actually want to be on here, you can just go to there. Okay. And submit your site again, you can go to there. Alright. So that just puts you on the showcase. Again, benefit is that backlink going into your thing, you know, into your site. And because they people can click go straight in there so it's a, it's a really it's almost like it although we don't market it it's almost like a place people can go if they want to find a dog trainer or something they could go on there click and they could go straight through so you never know because we do market this site this site is on Google we haven't heavily marketed it yet but we will later because there'll be more content that goes on there so people will be coming through that site a lot more so there's again a chance of it going through you know marketing is like a spider's web interlinking cogs if you like and all links back so it can all help you so definitely go in there and get that so the last place I want to look at now is going to be our YouTube challenge um, channel so YouTube channel is a um, really important place for us because we there's lots of videos that go on there that do not appear anywhere else so I'm just flicking up the YouTube channel now before I share so I'll be putting this into here um, and I'll be showing you a few things that you can do in YouTube as well. So that's our YouTube channel. Let me just share my screen. Right, so youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Zendler. 
So this is our YouTube channel. Now there are there is content that goes into our YouTube challenge a channel that does not go anywhere else. And uh, you to know if a new video gets put in there, especially this new features. You know we all love new features. I've had people in the Facebook group say I didn't realise there's so many new features being added, but if they had gone to our YouTube channel, click the subscribe, hit the bell icon, they would have got a mail gone through to them telling them that a new feature had come out. So it's a really good thing to do. Subscribe and hit that bell icon and then you will be informed when a new feature comes out and any other videos that we produce on here. So these are our new features, probably the most important area for a lot of you, but there are other areas that are really important. One is the R Zenlers. R Zenlers and Zenla FBHs here are questions that you have asked on the Facebook group. Now generally I will do the video, or we will do the video, and then I will answer and put the link to the, to the YouTube video in the answer on the Facebook group. But it only appears in that thread. And you know how quick our Facebook group moves. It gets lost really easily. So if you actually just come to the YouTube channel, you can see all these content. So it's a cleaner approach for running lives. I've done there. And this looks at that grid, that um, YouTube challenge type look that we saw earlier. So it shows you how to have it. And this was actually asked by Jackie. Jackie was on earlier. I think she might not be here now. But um, she asked the question like because she wants to run this and she was asking um, how that could be done, how a cleaner approach could be done. And um, so that video is done for her and it was a longer video. So it's an Ask Zendler. So normally they're longer. If we have a quick little answer to do on we we'll do a Zendler FBH which is a Facebook help. And these are just quick little videos that show you exactly what to to do. And we we'll just put that in the post as well. Um, we also have some reviews here. I'm going to be putting some, asking for more uh, testimonials from you guys as well at some point. You can get on here and uh, talk about what you love about the platform. Then we have the Zen the Pro user interview. So Kevin is running these. Um, I think he's going to put some up uh, pretty soon. But um, these are really interesting. These are pro users and what they're doing with the platform. And there's quite really unique ways that they're using uh, Zenla to do their courses and stuff. So this is a really, really cool area. Uh, I've covered the Zenla FBHs, and, uh, but it's definitely worth looking. By the way, guys, if you click here, you can go into the playlist and you can see them all. You can see how many we've got. So um, a lot, a lot going on. We have a day with Zenla. So last week I can see there's Alice there. Alice will be joining us in at three o'clock. So she'll be talking and you can see inside here that we have all our day with Zenlers. These normally go up a day after this recording and uh, we have our live builds. Now this is what I was talking about, live builds. So you guys stuck with design or maybe you've got a WordPress, a Wix, a Squarespace site, who knows what, um, any site, an HTML site, doesn't matter. Um, and you want to convert that and take that across and have the same look and style in your Zenler site. This shows you these ones here are WordPress sites. So these are WordPress sites that have been turned into um, Zendler sites. And you know, you'd be hard pressed to see the difference between the sites. You know, someone was coming in and they jumped from your WordPress site to your Zendler site. They probably wouldn't even notice they're on a different site. You know, that's how pixel perfect Zendler can be when you're designing this stuff. Um, so get a good result. So these show you how it was built um, and it goes into detail on that. You can see we've done quite a lot of live builds. Uh, we started off ages ago with a Californian Wushu martial arts site. Then we've got an English site. We've got a ukulele site, empowering parents, um, a guest house. Uh, it's amazing all the different stuff that we're doing on here. That's why I love it. Uh, live workshops, so live workshops go into here. Uh, these are one Sunday lives that I'm running and they'll go in there. That You'll see that these are actually in order. 
so they're in order like three four and they run in order so it takes you from the very beginning right the way through I need to add some more to this as well uh, we have any sort of workshops that are going on so they go into this area and we also have an unsubscribed information pack as well check this out this is um, this is really good because this um, is a little pack that we put together for you free to show you, your students if you've got a subscription how to unsubscribe now you might not want to include that because you might you, you don't want them to unsubscribe, unsubscribe but it is a good idea and the reason it's a good idea is because it shows people how easy it is to get out of a subscription sometimes a lot of people are saying how do how do my students unsubscribe so you could put a little flow together um, of how that works so if I go into this here let me just pause that and um, go down here you can see we have free templates a little free download packs here and how it actually all works um, for this so you definitely check this out because it's um it's quite interesting I go into detail on how that works as well so this is our YouTube channel and uh, if I go back here what is also good about this channel is you can search really easy and that's like kind of the whole point of me telling you about the education so I told you about the search feature on the tutorial site so in the complete guide you've got that searchy at the top you can actually search all of the sections in there by using that search inside the tutorials this is to make your life easier okay but inside of YouTube we have the same thing so if you were interested in in something like funnels you could see all the videos by typing on our channel page typing funnels in there hitting enter and it's going to bring up all of our videos that we've mentioned funnel in the title so how to set up a video series funnel classic lead magnet marketing funnels adding forms video funnels um, when you do your search just a little pointer try if you can if the video at the top is close don't go down to like this is a video funnel down here there's a video series funnel but this is an older one um, stay with the ones that are newer okay because um, it is newer that's about the same age but if you can go with the newer ones then it's better so uh, you can see all our playlists in here in here so you can see all the playlists that we've set up and uh, you can pop in there uh, back to the videos there so that's our that's all the videos that's in upload order uh, so you can see how many we produce for you this is not even getting started <laughs> right so there's a lot of content so using things like search you're gonna to have to use search and even I sometimes and I know I did a video on that but was it a live workshop was it an Arsene or was it an FBH you know so I have to hunt around but usually I can find the answer within two minutes okay and it can save you a lot of frustration if you're on the Facebook group it can save a lot of frustration with uh, trying to find the uh, content of something <laughs> still here for five minutes Jackie <laughs> that's good you hung in there uh, yeah like you know the re replay will be on here anyway so you can always catch up on the replays um, if there's anything in there oh by the way guys uh, just to let you know um, on the YouTube channel uh, with a David Zendler everything's time stamped so I go through it and I time stamp everything that's going on so if I go into this one for instance I'll just pause it uh, you're gonna see down here that you can actually just jump to the timestamp so last week I had um, Alice on their social media and when she finished I had Angela Sundust and there was um, she was talking about noise and marketing this was really a really interesting one uh, Angela is a marketer um, fabulous um, fabulous content from her and uh, and then I had Aaron on Aaron was on at the end and uh, we overrun with Aaron's one but he Aaron's quite well known on the group he does live builds with people he, he actually builds sites for people he's a he that's what he does and he's a partner as well but um, he was on there showing how he does things so how he uses it we had Amit on the month before as well again he's a seller of the platform as well and a course creator so these guys are really good because they're dropping in and they're showing how they're actually doing things that they're charging people um, to do so Aaron does he works slightly differently he works with people so he actually shows you he does it 
and he shows you how he's doing it. A bit like me with live builds, um, except you're paying him. We do everything for free. So um, Angela, though, was really good. She was talking about how to stand out in the crowd and all those things. Uh, but we have start timestamps. So inside here, you can just hit the timestamp and bang. Angela, there we go. So we, we're straight in on those things. So all of the day with video, or all the day with Zenlers are all time stamped when they go in there. So Jackie, that will make life a lot easier for you. You can just pick up, you know, you can skip me, skip me at the beginning because you've already watched it and jump on to uh, Kevin's slot um, for that. So that's gonna make life easier. So we should have uh, Kevin coming on in about six minutes time. So. We like to answer questions, so if you do have any questions, if you want to pop them into the chat, uh, that's going to be really good. So I have a few little things I want to uh, talk about. We've only got six minutes to go before Kevin comes on, so I might I'll start it and then we can um, get back. So I wanted to talk about some speed tips uh, for you producing your sites. Uh, these are tip, These are things that I do all the time, and it saves a lot of uh, time, and also saves you actually working live on your site. So um, these are going to be speed tips that we're doing, and I'm going to show you how to do those later. One last thing I need to jump back to, and I knew I'd forgotten something. Uh, for you guys that have joined the tutorials.newzenda.com site, and you've signed up to the NZ Mastercast bundle, what you're going to receive now is a newsletter so we have produced a newsletter for you and uh, this is going to go out once a week it's going to go out on thursday it's going to come out two o'clock uh, gmt time and it is going to mean that all the information we're sending to you about any lives that are coming up anything that's regular is going to be in that newsletter so we're not going to uh, we were kevin was doing a challenge he was running out emails i was doing a challenge running out emails alice was doing a challenge running out of emails so what we decided to do was like put it all under one little um area and uh just do once a week every thursday two o'clock gmt time there'll be a newsletter going out a weekly newsletter from us at zenla that will contain any relevant information at the time so this is the email that's going out. Now to make things easier for you, we've actually included on the tutorials.newzenla.com site, we've included a newsletter, little menu item. So if you click here, it's gonna to go to our archive. So you can see when we do the next one, it's gonna go out here and you can actually look through them. So you can go into this one and this is the newsletter that was sent out yesterday and this tells you what's going on. So this will be like an archive area of checking out the newsletter. This was all done through Zenla. Everything we do, where humanly possible, is done inside Zenla. Okay, and this mail that you got yesterday was from the email broadcast inside Zenla. And that's why at the bottom it says, powered by Zenla. Now, before you ask, like, how did you format that? How did you make it look like this? It was done with HTML code. We did code it, but I just wanted you to see it because see the power of the platform that you can actually get beautiful looking emails. You don't have to use MailChimp. You can just use these. Now I did a workshop and I've got to find the link for it on using Lyra Mail uh, to actually produce these sort of things. But what I intend to do, and this is a little bit of a sneak preview for you, is I'm going to do some elegant email templates in HTML that you can drop into the email broadcast. So you can use it. So there'll be some nice simple designs that will just make your emails look better uh, with things like font and things like that. And I, you know what I'm like, I go overboard. So I'm going to go into detail how you could change certain things in there in the code in a very easy digestible way. And then you can have fabulous looking newsletters like this sent out directly from your Zenla platform. And that way you might even think about, you know what, I don't need MailChimp anymore. I don't need ConvertKit anymore. Um, up to you, but uh, that's what we're going to do. So a little bit of a sneak preview. So yeah, Gabriel is looking forward to that. Yeah, I'll get onto that pronto. It's not going to take me very long. It's actually very simple. Um, I need to think about you as the user at the end um, to be able to update these things. So I'm going to work on some 
nice simple things that you can just drop your logo in. There might be a tied Canva template to make sure that you're meeting the correct sizes for the newsletter as well, but that'll all be explained and easy to do, okay? So when we do do that, I'll send out an email to you guys and you can you can jump on board with that stuff. So that is our Zenla weekly newsletter. Um, remember also that Kevin has uh, Zen Chat as well, and uh, that's something I didn't put. We didn't put on the newsletter because uh, we were trying to get this first one out so we can get the ball rolling. And if we go into the um, the Zen Chat, which we've got here, this is a really good area to go into. So I'm going to copy that link there. And I'm going to put that in here. So what is Zen Chat all about? Zen Chat is all about networking. So it's all about networking with other instructors. There's lots of breakout rooms. Um, there's a real sense of community. People are starting to link up and work with each other. Imagine you're a dog trainer or you're um, stuck doing something in a particular thing with dogs and you've got another dog trainer who's doing something in yeah in slightly different area if you linked up and backlinked to each other's websites with links to their courses you could really help each other and this is like this is a major thing like if you guys can you're already doing an amazing job in the community but if you can reach out to people that are doing similar things then it can be really good there's a guy in the facebook group called michael ricks and he does uh, what's called um he does he uses a program called unity and it's like a, a way to produce uh, games for um, you know like playstation and all these sort of things i on the other hand do assets so i create 3d characters and things like that so i'm looking at working with rick sending a link to his courses and then he sends a link to my courses and suddenly you've got a network and then you can build that network so that is what zen chat is all about it's also to talk about how people are doing things and how they want them to run so kevin runs hosts all the zen chat things it was his it's his little baby he's on it i've been on a few um but he's actually got some community members actually running the breakout rooms and they're in there as assistants and it's a really lovely um area as well so jackie's off okay jackie See you later. Catch up with us later. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, Jackie, there's... Um, Kevin said the same yesterday. There was some extraneous text in the next newsletter. Do not worry. It will be clean. Okay. There was some errors with the code putting across, but uh, my my fault. Um, I did check it in my Outlook. It actually worked fine, but um, maybe it's um, a legacy issue or something. But you can always go to this page here to look at any of the blog posts. So make sure that you um, check that out as well. Put that in the chat. Yeah, so Gabriel's came through. Okay, yeah, I think Gmail's working fine. It seems to be Outlook. I don't know if it's a legacy version of Outlook. I'm using the latest version. It actually came through perfectly fine. But there is some code in there for responsive issues. But I, it is something that we're looking at. Uh, yeah, sorry if that's happening to you, but um, it won't next time for sure. Um, Jackie, I might run a test to you as well, just to see if, um, just as a testing purposes, because if I can't reproduce it, I can't see it. So, uh, good. All right. So now we have Kevin is coming on. There he is. He's there. So, well time. Two minutes. Sorry, Kevin. I was a little bit late there. Um, I'm here. <laughs> you can you hear me yeah i was talking about zen chat a little bit there and oh, telling, awesome. people, telling people what it was all about yep so um yeah you know community and um i put the link in the chat as well for people to go through to it because it's something that um i don't know people don't know enough about it i don't think and don't know the power that it could have yeah it's uh, second and fourth mondays of every month so our next one is next monday um and it's really interesting just to see people that are starting to form friendships, um, you know, because it is a lonely world as a course creator at times. Uh, we get stuck behind our desks and we forget the world exists. Um, so to actually chat with other people in a similar industry, trying to achieve something that, 
that we're trying to achieve is always quite nice. So we're seeing friendships formed, uh, collaborations, testers. There's all sorts of wonderful stuff happening in there. Um, and we're seeing familiar faces, which is fantastic because they're getting value if they're coming back. But we're also seeing new people as well. So the great thing is it it really humanizes the community. We see lots of chatter going on in there from a picture and a name. But when everybody comes on camera on Zen Chat, it's not ne- it's a non-negotiable point. You have to be on camera. You have to have a working mic. So waltz and all, we get to see you as a real life human being. Um, and that's what it comes down to. So yeah, it's really, really great. So thanks for promoting that. Um, I really enjoy running those. Yeah, it's no, it's a great idea, and it's um, yeah, it's it's one of those things. You know, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, I'm just trying to find a feed in the Facebook group. Um, I can't find it at the moment, strangely enough, um, because I'm hoping there's going to be questions on my section today. Um. So bear with me two seconds. I'm just uh, trying to load in the group now. We should be posted at the top of the group. Oh, yeah, there we are. There we are. Oh, right, good. Excellent. Right, I've got it. I okay, remembered. so should I crack on for half an hour or so, give you a bit of a breather? Yep. Kevin is talking about, and I don't know, cool stuff. So this is a surprise. We don't know what Kevin's going to talk about. So take it away, Kevin. I'll right. speak to you in about half an hour. Thanks, David. Just jump back in when you're ready. Um, it'll be about half an hour-ish. So, so I've given this a lot of thought today as to what I wanted to come on live and talk about. And Often we give out training, we give how-tos, this is what you need to do, this is how you do it, this is what buttons you press, and all of that type of thing. But there's one thing every single person in New Zealand has in common that we haven't yet addressed. And it's probably one of the most critical things that we need to give some thought to. Now, I'm going to go through some ideas, but I also want you to come in and give some ideas yourself. So put some thoughts down in the chat. If you are watching this live and it's something that you may or may not have given thought to, or it's something that you've decided is definitely worth um, uh, think about for the future, but you haven't quite got there yet. And this is, um, I'm going to be talking today about your customer's journey, their experience with you as a business because ultimately using New Zealand is a business enterprise. Uh, we have a course creation area that's a very core of New Zealand is we're a learning management system. A learning management system facilitates the process of to sell information or training for financial reward as a business. That's what we're here for. Now, obviously that's expanded out into you can create blogs and funnels and pages and websites and all of these other wonderful things. However, when we start off, and specifically we do this online, we often come at it from the point of view of what is our objective? What do we want people to do? We want people to buy our course. How are we going to get people to buy our course? Well, we're going to do this, do that, do whatever. And if we follow a process, and we go through this process in the five-day blogging bootcamp, we go through it in the uh, launch and market, uh, market your course, we go through it in... Um, the launch your first course boot camp. David, I'm sure, will go through some of it in the YouTube challenge that he's doing it next week. But how we look at it from our perspective, we look at it from we want them to achieve that. We want them to come and ultimately buy our course. What we need to also throw into the mix, and this becomes when you're a little bit more um, established with your processes for course creation is what is the journey like for each particular customer and how do we address their needs when they need them addressing? And this is probably one of the singular most important questions you will ever ask yourself. And if you find a single solitary answer to it, um, you've probably got it wrong because there isn't one solo answer to it. Because as we know, when we're selling courses to real life human beings, Every human being is different, which is why behavioural marketing has become such a big deal these days. Um, We give a result based on an action or inaction taken by 
someone that's come across what we do. That's behavioral marketing in a nutshell. Now, we have to work within the confines of the New Zealand platform and what it allows us to do or not to do. And therefore, some stuff which is highly advanced, um, we can't do, we're in New Zealand. And to be fair, probably at an entry level, you wouldn't want to get involved in because it will just blow your mind up. But there are some things that we can do that will, in New Zealand, that will probably get you a better result long term in what your objective is as a business owner. And of course, as a business owner, we want to make money because that's what we're here to do. So I hope you're all with me so far. Um, I am watching the Facebook chat. So if you want to interact with me on here today, normally on uh, David Zendler, I don't get the interaction. Um, I normally just say, this is my piece, let's get on with it. But today I want you interacting. So if you're, if you're with me and you're thinking, you know what, the customer journey side of things is something I've given a little thought to, let me know in the chat. If it's something you've absolutely nailed and you want to tell us what your process is, then also put that in the chat because it is something that we need to consider. Now, where do we start with this whole process? And the process really starts before the client has even been introduced to us because we have to work out what is the very first part of the introduction that people are going to have when they come across what we do? Is that going to be a sales page? Is it going to be a blog post? Is it going to be an opt-in? Is it going to be a webinar? They're normally the most general ones. It could be that we've, so if they've come in via search, that's where they've come from. If they've come from social media, how would I introduce you into social media? Is it come from an update you did? Was it a live stream that you did, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the next stage, once we've established where our people may be coming from, is what's the very first piece of content they're going to see? Because the first piece of content is the most critical piece of content. And this is where we start to really need to understand where we're going with this and how people are going to interact with it. Make sure that the right people come in to the right piece of content at a time. Now, if we take that on the basis of 30% uh, of our traffic will land on our homepage on a website, that's fact. Um, that, that's not a made up stat. That is what the current statistics are showing us. If you look in your Google Analytics, if you look at anywhere or talk to any uh, web marketer, they will tell you exactly the same thing. 25 to 30% of your traffic goes on your homepage. Now, what does that mean? What it means is that your homepage is your navigation to information. Okay, it's as simple as that. Um, if somebody lands on a specific sales page, they have an idea of what they're there for. They've counted themselves in, they want to look at it. It may be a product that's interesting to them. It might be a course that's interesting to them. If they come onto your homepage, the likelihood is that they've maybe done a search, your homepage has done its job and you've been found, you've been recommended um, by someone. So if they said, okay, I want a dog training company, they might not have the link to dog training a sausage dog, for example, which you may have a specific course or page on, which for them would be awesome. They may have just come across your homepage. So your homepage is your navigation. Now, we can do this in New Zealand very, very easily. Um, most of us don't. Normally, we overlook it and we just go hell for leather of buy my course. Here's my homepage. This is what you're going to do because I've dictated that's what you're going to do. So look at your homepage and look at your homepage as somebody that doesn't know you. Somebody that's been introduced to your rounded service. They may have a specific need, but they don't know where to find the answer within your area right now. And look at your homepage and look at it from that point of view. Are we creating an environment on our homepage that allows people to navigate to the right area easily? That's your very first and singular most important question for your homepage, because that's its only job. Its job is not to sell stuff. Its job is not to um, nail someone into a, being a client. A homepage job is purely to get people to navigate around. So you're still with me, that's good. So point number one, think about your homepage. 
somebody comes across, they've been recommended to you, they may have found you in Google search, they've gone dog trainer in outer Mongolia, for example, your website comes up because you've optimized it properly on New Zenla. We talk, remember, we're talking New Zenla here. They've come across to found your public facing homepage. Remember, we can have a logged in, logged out homepage. So this is for people that are logged out, don't know you, have no idea that you even existed until that point. So they have no prior relationship. They may know someone that knows you and they've remembered your web link, which is great. And they've said, go off, have a look at these people. That's what's going on. This is where our customer experience starts because we want them to be able to firstly feel good that they're in the right place. Secondly, be able to navigate to the information that they're looking for very, very easily. If that's not possible, you need to readjust your homepages. Think about what is missing from there. Have you just put a long list of courses in? using the dynamic course block may not be the most appropriate thing. It may be, I don't know. Um, have you put any links into blogging category areas? Have you put a link into an opt-in form where they can go and opt-in for something if they're looking for that piece of information? Have you got a live webinar running? Have we made that available to them on the homepage? However we do it, it has to be right for them. So look at it from their perspective. They've come to you, they don't know you, but they have a need for something that you may offer. Their homepage will not give them the depth of information they need to make a buying decision or even an opt-in decision at that point. So where are we showing them where they need to go next? That's your first thing. Now, like I've said a million times before, David said it, Alice has said it, everybody has said it anywhere in the marketing world. This does come back to understanding who you want in your business, your avatars, your client profiles, and all of those things. So when we understand those, they come onto our page, this is where they are. We navigate them around. Once we've navigated them around, we give them the correct information they're looking for. Where do we get them to go next? So we have a, they have a choice. If they've gone on to an opt-in page, for example, they'll opt-in or they won't opt-in. Do we understand where they've gone when they haven't opted in or when they've left that page? Do we understand what we're going to do with them or help them to do if they do opt in on that page? Let's use the opt in as, as the next example. So they come across the want dog training for a sausage dog. They come onto a, a dog training homepage. On that homepage, uh, just so happens that that dog trainer specializes in training sausage dogs, training German shepherds, and training um, pugs and that's their thing so right at the top of their page they've gone if you want more information about training this specific type of dog pick your dog picture of a pug picture of a sausage dog picture of a german shepherd straight away clients this is great i've got a sausage dog i want to click on the sausage dog i don't care about german shepherds or pugs how rude um, but i want to i want to learn about training my sausage dog so they click on it We've decided that what we have available for people interested in that is an opt-in. So we've got five top tips for training your stubborn sausage dog. Um, that's our opt-in. So at this point, they have a choice. They've read through some information. You've gone into some depth as in, you know, I'm going to give you this. Maybe it's a free module in a course. That's how we're opting them in. It might be a, a PDF that we're giving them, an audio sequence that we're going to give them or whatever. So we get them to come in. They're feeling good at the moment. They're feeling, you know, quite engaged with you. Um, so they look at it and they go, you know what, actually, I don't have time. I really like this, but I don't have time. And they leave. That person then goes off, probably forgets you exist. What's their customer journey been like so far? Not horrible, but maybe not the best. So how can we improve that particular experience for that client or that potential client? We've got our opt-in. They don't have the time to do it. We need to maybe look at having something like an exit intent pop-up. They're really useful. Pop up on the site. They're going to go and leave. Well, before you go, we know you haven't got time. Quickly put your email in here and we'll send you this information for, to look at when you've got a bit more time. Oh, that's handy. I can type in an email address. That won't take two minutes. Let's just do that. 
hmm, when they've got them into our area where we can work a little bit more on their experience with us. So that works really quite well. Our goal is that we don't want people to leave without them taking some form of committed action. OK, to get a committed action, what they have to have is the right information at the right time in a way presented to them that will make their life easy. And if we make it too difficult, if we fill our sites full of stuff that takes too long or anything like that, they're not going to come in. So remember, customer journey, that's what we're talking about. So they've come in homepage, they've picked their sausage dog, they've looked at your opt-in, they haven't really got time to read the whole thing. They've gone to leave, pop-up pops up. Before you go, quickly fill this in. You've got a sausage dog. You'll want this information. We're not giving them a big, long thing to read. We're just taking the facts that actually they've shown an interest. They haven't got time, clearly, because they're leaving. They can't bother to read everything we put on that page. Let's just grab their email. Brilliant. So they're happy because they've got to go off and do what they've got to do. They've still got the information coming that they want. We've still captured the interest for someone that showed an interest. So their customer journey at the moment is quite good. From a business point of view, it's brilliant because we've now got a micro commitment from them that actually we know they're not going to read at that time a whole heap of stuff. Um, so therefore, we know that with that particular opt-in, if they sign up via the main page opt-in, we can be a bit more in depth. If they sign up via the exit intent opt-in, they're people that don't have a lot of time. Here's where we start to split out what we do. So we create two lists. One is main opt-in, got time to read the page. This is going to be a longer informational opt-in. We're going to give them more stuff. Maybe on that one, we'll give them access to a course. It might be written, PDF, stuff to do, whatever. On the other opt-in where they're jumping about for time, maybe we'll give them an option of a quick PDF sheet. So same information, but really nailed down. Quick PDF sheet, or here's an audio if you're on the go, you want to listen to that instead, just download it, play it, on, play it in your car, wherever you want to do it. So same information, same client, same needs. One has time, one doesn't have time. The customer journey for both of them is great. So if they've got time, they'll come in because they want their training for their sausage dog. If they're rushing about, we've still got them. Behavioral marketing, remember. But we've presented the information in a slightly different way. Two separate lists. So they go through two different funnels are you all with me right now i hope you are nobody's talking to me so perhaps i just can't see the messages but we're getting into this deep you may want to watch this back because when you really focus and hone in on this you will understand even the smallest of uh behavioral based marketing can make the largest of differences to you achieving your objective so Homepage navigation, If make it really easy for them to find their appropriate information. In my example, the sausage dog owner comes along, they're looking, you as an opt-in page, we want to give them quite a bit of information. Why do you want to opt-in for this? We're not just going to go, here, put your name and email in, opt-in because I'm awesome, you know it, sign up. They don't know you. Why would they do that? So for the reader, the person that's got some time, they're going to go, right, I'm on this opt-in page. What is it I'm going to give my email over for? Right, because we people get hassled on email. So if they're going to hand it over, they want something of value. Right, I've got time to read this. Bom, bom, bom. I want that for my dog because my dog is my little angel. It's I cherish it, et cetera, et cetera. So they're going to do that. The busy person that's got the same need right that hasn't got time to read it goes you know what my friend recommended you you look like a pretty decent fellow or or, or lady um right I, I can't read all of this i don't know what it is it's something to do with sausage dogs right i haven't got time i'm off oh pop up don't go you've got a sausage dog you need this information oh 10 seconds worth of it bump in so both ways they're in your conversion rate when you have a system like that will go through the roof because it's very much based on what their need and desire is. If you negate one of those, your conversion rate will go massively down because they are the two most common types of people that you will get come along to any form of opt-in. And I'm using opt-ins as an example because the premise of this works with everything, okay? But we're gonna focus on the opt-ins. 
Now, once they're in our opt-ins, the same idea will start to formulate, but we can cross over slightly. And we can use the, the idea of tags within New Zenla to actually get people into what we want them to do and start to shift people around and identify what people are looking for. So remember, we've created two lists. Uh, we've created one list for uh, the person that we deem to have time. They've read the proper opt-in page. They've gone in. We we'll call it main opt-in one. Then we've got the quick opt-in person. Doesn't really have the time and all of that. So we've asked them to go off and do something, maybe download, maybe listen to an audio. Um, now, here's where we need to get a little bit more information from them. Are we tracking what they're doing? Are we tracking that they've gone into where we want to be? Right, big opt-in person, let's give them free access to a course. Really easy one, that one. Right, you've opted in for this. We'd love to give you the first two modules of this course. Here's the link, go and sign up. You can tell immediately in New Zenla, have they gone in through that link and enrolled into that course, yes or no? It's simple, you'll get notified. If they have, that's brilliant. If they, we can add a tag onto it, so we know people in that list, we can then use our new bulk actions and move them into a different area so they don't keep getting the follow-up emails. Um, if they don't have that tag applied uh, in New Zenla, then we can make sure that we maybe take them into the other route of the quick route guide because they may have had time at that point where they've got time to read. This is main ops in one. They've gone in, they've gone, yeah, course, good for me. I've got time to go through this first couple of modules of this course right now. That's brilliant. I'm going to go off and do that. But the second time you sent them something, they may not at that point have time. So they've opened the email. We can tell this because New Zealand gives us stats on open rates but they've not actually gone and signed to that course. We can also see this by, um, if we have it as a secret course in New Zealand, we can see how many people have visited our course, how many people have signed up. We can see that as a percentage. So we could track all of this stuff up until this point. Now, we're remember, we're focusing our attention on their behaviour, their experience, their journey for each person, and it's never going to be the same. So at that point, we can go, okay, we've had we've sent this email out on Monday. It's now Wednesday. We've had 10 people sign up. We've got five people in the course. They've now been tagged with enrolled in whatever course. We can call it course number one, sausage dog course, whatever you want to call it. We've given them two free modules. That's brilliant. We can then start an automation within that course to nurture those people through to the rest of the course. That's as complex as it needs to get. With the other people that haven't yet signed up, we can uh, add a tag for those so they've not enrolled in that course. We can do this as a bulk action on that list. Not enrolled in course, add tag, not sausage dog course as our tag. And maybe move them into a separate list. Then we can start to focus on the people with the quick opt-in. Have they gone in? Have they gone and downloaded that PDF? Again, different course different material as in it's, this one's got an audio in it right but the other one's got the full elements of the course in but same content have they gone in downloaded that audio yes gone in signed up five people out of ten have signed up enrolled sausage dog audio course whatever you want to call it five people not again probably not got time put them in the same list and sequence as the first lot both 10 now into a new sequence of haven't signed up for either one of those courses. Are you with me so far? Okay. This is behavioral based marketing. Now, if you were to use something like um, there, there's really, really expensive systems out there that will automate pretty much most of that process. In New Zenda, we can automate part of the process and part of it will just have to set aside time to make sure we do that. So understanding if someone's enrolled in a course or not, that's easy to do. We go into the course, look at students, who's in there, go back to our list, who have add tags to those students, bulk action, all these students add tag enrolled in course, go over to our list, it will automatically update the tag on their account. So any student with that tag, move them from that list, take them out. We don't really want them in that list anymore. They're in the list for the course. 
just remove them from the other list. They'll follow up the sequence in the course email sequence. Okay. They're then going to be merged in with the others that haven't taken the action. And then we keep on with our normal broadcast email sequences to encourage them. And we'll change it around. So the ones that came in quickly, we'll send them the other link and say, right, do you want to come into this one? The ones that took the long route round, we'll send them the quick links, right? If they don't do either, we'll move them into a general marketing list because they may have decided maybe they've sold their sausage dog. Maybe they don't need that training no more. Perhaps they've turned around and said, actually, it wasn't a sausage dog in the first place. It was a German shepherd. And they've had to go back and go to the right course for German shepherds. Yeah, there's multiple reasons as to why they can't. What we can't do is keep pushing them down a the route based on their inaction. We have to have a cutoff point. When they don't take our actions, what point do we say, actually, we're going to stop trying to get you to do this. We've tried maybe two or three different approaches with you because you showed the interest here. You've said you don't want to do that right now because of that. You've said you don't want to do that right now because of that. Well, if that's the case, let's take you back a few steps. You clearly like the idea of some form of dog training. Let's take you back and see if we need to get you back to the home page. Maybe take you over to a, a blog post we've written that's a bit more generic about dog training. Perhaps it's a different issue you've got now. Perhaps it isn't breed specific. Perhaps it's um, my dog keeps climbing on my table and falling asleep. How do I stop it type of issue? I don't know. So think of it from their perspective, right? So I've gone through with you a very basic sequence of behavioral-based marketing that we can do in New Zenla with a couple of manual elements. There's only a couple there, not many, that will take your conversion rate from probably about 15% up to about 90%, right? So think about it from their point of view. And when you set this system up, and it's easy to do, don't test it yourself. Test it as in the point of view. We talk about testing all of the time. Test it from, I've come along to this website. I don't know you. I'm not logged in. How do I view this? Right? And then go off and follow the sequence from both perspectives. So let's go off and do this as a lead magnet and do it from both perspectives. Right? I'm a busy person, but I want to train my sausage dog. Right? I'm going to click on obviously remove sausage dog and put your own bit in there. Um, I want to train my sausage dog. I've got loads of time. I'm going to opt in for the main opt-in. I'm now in the free modules for this course. What emails am I going to receive? Will it encourage me to sign up for the main course? Yes or no? That's sequence one. Sequence two, go in, click on sausage dog. Oh, I don't want to go in here. Oh, this has popped up. I ain't got no time. I'm going to go and sign up quickly here. What do I get now? Am I going to do this? Am I not going to do that? and experience everything you do as a client, right? We talk about testing from a practical point of view, as in, does this work? Yes or no? Do these buttons work? Does my links work? Do my sales pages work, et cetera, et cetera? What we rarely talk about is the experience testing, as in, when I go through this, do I feel good? Am I encouraged to do the right thing at the right time? And if the answer at any point in that time is no, you've got it wrong and you need to readjust it. And the great thing about this is we can constantly refine and readjust to get it right. And the more we learn about our customers, the more we learn about New Zender and its capabilities, the easier it becomes. Um, because you know when you get it right, because as I say, your opt-in rate in this example goes from 15% to 90%. It's, I mean, it's, I'm not talking it's a small difference. It's a big difference um i see it all of the time when i go out you know I, I we could come on here and talk about zen chat all day long right if i go into my list of people that have been on zen chat and go hi guys got this happening monday have you signed up yet very informal you know 80 percent of them will sign up for it because it's relevant to them it's what they've already shown an interest in they already want it they know the type of personality i am so when i put out one of my cheeky almost dry sarcastic emails that i do as in can't be bothered to write a long email here it is go on let's get on with it let's do this they all go yeah okay i'm really happy with this i know this guy we went last time it was fun let's do it 80 percent conversion rate the same principle applies to what you do in your new zenless sites 
And it all starts with your homepage. Get that bit right, navigate them to the right place for them, and then it starts slotting into place. Um, I think I'm going to shut up now um, because that's actually, I'd say, I wouldn't say it's an advanced system, but it's getting you down the path of behavioral based marketing, which most people won't talk about, but is the way forward. Um, it stops you being thought of as a spammer. It stops you sort of as being pushy in sales because everything you show them is what they actually want because they've told you it's what they want. And you have to respect the people that say, I don't want it. And this is a very, very, very basic introduction to it. So if you know what an email list is and what an opt-in is, you can do this. I may even, just for the sake of it, because I've just thought of it, do maybe a one-off masterclass on creating this and showing you exactly what it looks like in New Zenla. Yeah, we got um, it in the chat. <laughs> and somebody asked for that. Yeah. Well, I was saying, is it? Do you think this is a good one? I think this is an amazing one, yeah. and people are people are jumping in, and I'm sure people are going to say yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Maybe we can do it together. Yeah, I, I think so because this is it is really really powerful, and it doesn't matter if you have five people come along to a site, and this is where people get so hit up, and I get so frustrated, is people think it's a numbers game. It's not a numbers game. It's an appropriate game. It's if you get the right people, if you get one person, one person will buy if it's the right person. If you get five people, it's five people of the right people, five people will buy, right, when it's right for them. If you get 10,000 people because Google's thrown you 10,000 people and 9,500 people are wrong, you're going to sit there deflated going, oh, why have they not joined? Did they hate me? They don't like me. It's got nothing to do with it. It's, it's the wrong thing for what they're looking for. So the smaller we can make that number coming in of appropriate people, the right avatar, the right people, the right customer at the right time, the higher your conversion rate and the more successful you'll be. It really is simple. So many marketers will tell you it is about numbers and it's absolute nonsense. And I've seen people almost have nervous breakdowns over it where they've been so i put a facebook post up and nobody's liked it does everybody hate me i'm going to go and lick the garden dirt because you know that's all i'm worth and all of that stuff it's absolutely nothing to do with it you're probably putting the wrong thing out to the wrong people yeah it's quality not quantity you know yeah. we, we say that it's just i i had a question actually um kevin on that it was like it was for the uh, faith it was actually for the youtube challenge someone was saying well i got five thousand people do i really need to do this youtube but you got five thousand are those five thousand people buying yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a difference are you giving them the clear message do they know when they hit your site what it's about you know a lot of people do google ads facebook ads and they click it because they've got a nice catchy title they go to the site it's actually not the same yeah they don't, they're like well, I'm, I'm out of here. And they, they just shoot straight out because they feel deceived. And that's not doing you any good because, one, you're paying more money and you're also getting a bounce straight out of your website. Just... But you think something's going right when you've got 5,000 people on a YouTube channel and maybe you've got something right at some point. Um, but, you know, if they're not doing something at some point and not everyone's going to be active at the same time, it's just impossible. It's just life gets in the way. Um, but you want them to do something at some point. Uh, so, for example, on my email list that I have, and I have big email lists for my business, you know, I'll do an unsubscribe rate sequence. If they haven't opened the last five emails, I'll send them a, they'll go into a sequence that says, hello, are you still there? You know, and if they don't click that email, they automatically get an email saying, right, I've unsubscribed you from our list. You haven't opened the last six emails. If you want to come back, click here. It'd be great to have you back. But if not, we wish you well, blah, blah, blah. Because having a number, if they're not doing anything, it means nothing. It's completely irrelevant. Uh, it's a false statistic that, that isn't going to help you or give you a true reflection of how successful you're being in your marketing. And that is more critical and more to the point. Um, because if they've, maybe they've stopped. So for, for us at New Zenla, right? our list has to be cleansed because if we have a list of prospects and they're not opening, they may have decided courses are not for them. Maybe they don't like doing courses. Um, you know, not every, it's not for everybody. Um, we get that. That's fine. Maybe they've decided they're not self-employed anymore and they've become employed by a company. So therefore they're not doing courses on that basis. 
So they're never going to come back in the near future and interact with stuff when we're talking to business owners about course platform. It's, it's just not relevant for them. So it's better to take them out of our lists and say, thanks, you know where we are if you ever need us in the future, rather than sit there and go, our list is 500 million people long and we get three opens. You know, <laughs> so you have to be a realist at it. And one thing I will say, and it's come up again, and it came up this year, and it's come up from a number of people that I've spoken to, and I'm going to be totally out there and tell you right down the line about this. Don't buy followers, right? I've heard this in the last six weeks. People go, oh, I've got a new YouTube channel. I've got a new Twitter account. I, I look rubbish because I've only got five people following me. I'm going to go off and buy a few hundred. Don't do it, right? If anybody with half a brain goes and looks at your followers on there, and it's suddenly all written in Chinese or whatever, you just look like a fake. Um, so really don't do it. There's no benefit. It's not going to help your account. In fact, it's probably going to damage you more than anything. Um, put the graft in, put good content out, be consistent, you'll get the followers. It's as simple as that. And just grow it. Ste- I mean, look at our YouTube channel for New Zealand. We're up to 2.8 thousand from mm. two in a year and let's say a year and two thirds ish yeah and a, and a lot of activities going on there now there's more commenting there was zero before remember the zero yeah. um <clears throat> you know with not much uh content or just old content so it, it just shows you doesn't it um, and, and you know we only we only use our facebook group to market that channel we don't yeah. you know <laughs> but we remind people organically every week we're, we're here we are here's our youtube channel and to begin with it was real tough when we first started people were like oh we don't care it exists because there wasn't really anything great on there it's brand new there wasn't any reason for people to go there and then we started putting on the new feature release videos and stuff like that and suddenly people went oh this is really good where can i find what well, the videos now it's on our youtube go and subscribe oh okay and then it started growing but all of those are genuine subscribes, 100%. Um, none of them have been bought. Um, they're all people that are interested in New Zealand's YouTube channel. And we did that in a year and let's say a year and a half of being consistent, putting in content each week, you know, asking people to subscribe because, you know, if you don't ask, people just don't do it. Um, so we used, as David says, our Facebook, um, normally office hours, um, to say, go and subscribe here. And I'll be honest, it was a little bit soul destroying the first three months because we'd say it and nobody would do it. And we're like, what's the bloody point? Um, <laughs> but, you know, and you go through it. It doesn't matter. I mean, David and I have been doing this marketing gig for years and we still go through it when stuff like that happens. But we've got the experience to know if you're consistent and what you do is good and you just keep on being consistent, at some point it will start working. It has to, um, if you're putting it out to the right people. And that's what happened with the YouTube channel, 2.8 thousand people or whatever it is now. Um, lots of interaction. I look on there and I see people actually commenting on there as well, which is great for a YouTube channel. Most people don't want to talk to you. They want to hide away. But there's comments on there and stuff like that, and it's brilliant. So think everything comes back to the same thing. It's having the right people for the right reason in your area, knowing you. Um, you can't make them do something they don't want to do and neither should you um, by the same token make sure that you're guiding them to the place that they're looking for and that's the very very basics of what a customer experience or customer journey is is showing them the right information for them at the right time get that bit right everything else starts working nicely um, but yeah i'll think about doing a boot camp on that um, i'll talk to david after a day with zenla well, it won't be today because he'll be knackered by the end of this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it will probably be next week and we'll see if maybe we can do a, a maybe a two or three hour, actually maybe do a build and strategy session all in one. Um, that could be quite cool. We've, I don't think we've ever done that. Uh, certainly you and I haven't done it together. So no, know. good. You, you can you can run it and I'll just do the build. Tell me what you want and I'll just do it. That sounds good to me. <laughs> right, that's, that's the plan then. We'll, we'll do that because... Everything I've talked about here, you can do in New Zenla. Uh, there are a couple of little manual components to it, but 
I'm sure at some point that will be automated anyway in the future, but it, it works really well. So I hope you found that useful. Um, yes, please. Masterclass, Gabrielle. Uh, yeah, quite a few comments. I'll go through the comments afterwards. I haven't read them all, but yeah, I hope I've created more clarity than confusion today. Um, and you've sort of got an understanding of where we're heading with this, but I'll be back. I'll answer questions later on um, that are in the chat. I'll do it in a minute when I come off. Um, I'm going to shut up because it's now quarter to 11. So I think I only had half an hour, didn't I, David? Yeah, you did. But, you know, we love you. So you can carry on as long <laughs> as you like. <laughs> so I'll, I'm going to button it now. Um, thanks for having me. As always, David Zenla, awesome. Um, keep supporting David. Who have you got up next? We've got uh, Liz is coming on. So our hey. new recruit, Liz. Awesome. Right. Have fun. Be gentle with Liz community. Um, she's really lovely. Uh, most of you will know her anyway. But yeah, she's really, really great. Um, I'll support you from the chat. So have a good day. Thank you very much. And uh, Cheers, see Kevin. you later. Amazing. There we go. So uh, that was a surprise, wasn't it? So out of that has come a new workshop. So uh, yeah, and I think it's really valid. I didn't actually think of that before. So um for me, that's brilliant. I'm like, yeah, cause it's something that I do naturally, but I don't really, some of these things, you know, like Kevin does this stuff day in, day out. So what happens is um, sometimes you, it's just, it's just, that sounds obnoxious with this, but it's obvious sometimes, like for us to do these things and we don't kind of think about it. It's like the design, you know, these, some of these design workshops that we've run, um, we've, I, I just done them and some things are obvious to, for me to do because I've been working in the industry for a long time. But um, that's the thing, when you get into these subjects and like that was brought up today and now it's like, whoa, okay, yep, that was something that, yeah, I should have done that, I should have done that, I should have thought of that or, um, you know, Kevin's come along and he just said that and it just sparks a whole new thing because this is major. You know, we're not talking about something very little here, we're talking about major conversion rates from what you had before so this will be really good this will be really good and we're going to do it definitely so uh, we do have um, some questions so you can see um, who is an opening um, you can see an open you can filter Gabriel on opening emails um, I think I've got a video on that and we've got a question in from Maria as well but she's actually saying about um, She's brand new to Inzeg. She's doing all the training and she loves it. Um, so tags. So she she loves what we're doing at the moment. She's quite a long. We'll reply to that. Um, we'll reply to that, Maria. So yeah, Kevin will probably reply to those ones that are coming in. So uh, he'll be on there. So yeah, we have Liz coming up in a few minutes' time. Uh, I wanted to go on to a new thing now, and this is. Um, speeding up or speeding tips I think this will be quite interesting for you I've run through these things before but I feel I should sort of go through and just give you some sort of um, speed tips to doing certain things uh, because you know we all like to save ourselves some time and keep things consistent remember we use that word a lot here at Zendler keeping things consistent and uh, there are a few ways that you can speed up your production and uh, I want to just talk about them now it's only a few points so I should have this done in 10 minutes just before Liz pops up so first point number one is a Canva template or a template in general whether you're using something like Adobe Photoshop whether you're using Illustrator um, having a template is going to save you a lot of time so I have this um, template set up here now you guys that have done my live workshops will realize and this is the key number to write down if you haven't done this 1920 by 1080 um, what I tend to do is and again the team will mention this a lot of times is keeping things simple keep it simple um, because you can reproduce things easily so like if you've got a page and you're sticking to one size ratio and in this case I'm using 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels that size is not made up It's actually HD size is actually HD high HD HD size 1k 2k 4k the ratio is exactly the same up and down Okay, so 1920 by 1080, which is high HD, means that if you do a template out, 
at that size, you can use that not only for your course video thumbnails, you can also use it inside the pages for course cards. It's the same ratio, you just drag out the crop to the full width and it will be that size. It will push it down to that same ratio. So this is a key size. So what I tend to do and what I ask new people or even intermediate is to do all your course images, even your on-page images as 1920 by 1080 because that way you've only got to do one template. So you can see here in Canva I have this simple template set up and you can see I've got multiple course cards running through here and you can see that inside the actual website itself I can use these for these course cards. I can also use them for any videos that are in there. So I'm using this one template to do a series of things. One is to produce images for my website for my website pages for blog posts for all of these things and I'm producing it all out of the same template at this size I can also use it for the course card I can also use it for the video thumbnail I could also introduce it into the video while I'm editing my videos because it's going to be the same size uh, if you're recording in high HD 1920 by 1080 okay so you can use it for a multiple of things so this means you one template and you can keep changing things around so if I want to create a new style of this I can just duplicate this up I can come into the colors here and I can go, okay, let's choose something a little bit different. Let's choose, um, I don't think I've done a blue one. So let's just choose something like this one and um, choose the next color along like this and then maybe use this one and come, come along to this one and choose, choose a darker one. Go into some of these colors here and maybe change this to the lighter blue. And um, I think that's, uh, Let's leave that as it is. And then change this text to something like something else, like, um, which shall I put? Walking the dog, something like that. And now I've got a brand new card. I can now export that, so I can download that. This is page two, you can see it there. So I can go to JPEG, which is standardly what I produce these out as. I keep all this the same. You can leave the quality about 80. That's going to be absolutely fine. Then I just choose the one, which is page two. I click that one and I click done and I click download. And now I will have, when it downloads, I will have this card. So if I go into my folder now, you're going to see inside here, I have that downloaded. And I'm ready to use that inside my courses, inside my video thumbnails, I'm editing, I can use it in my pages. And it all makes life so much easier. So you don't have to just stick with these templates you've got here. If you want to do something completely different, you could duplicate this page up again. You could take all that content. Um, you could get rid of all that content out there. And then you could go to some of the photos. You might find, a, I don't know, some, let's just put a dog in here. Like that let's just choose a doggy picture something like this one here looks nice um, set that as background like that and then maybe grab some text and do something like that um, really easily inside here uh, we can create something like this really quickly and of course then you can just download it so you can keep it and also working from a template you're keeping things consistent so you're not randomly making things up you're keeping this all consistent in here again I could download this one I would go to download I would choose the JPEG type um, I wouldn't do all pages I just select free I click download and then I would have that at that size 1920 by 1080 so that is one of my speed saving um, techniques uh, that you can use so uh, next one we've got here is use a blank page for templates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just download, I'll download this new one just because we've got a new one. And uh, let's just do that. So there he is there. Let's click download. Click. Okay. And um, I'm going to log into my site now. So what I like to do is I like to just play around with things, you know, but I, if I've got an active live site, this is a, this is dangerous because if I'm, 
changing something on a live page where my students have bought into a course or a membership then um, and I click save then it's going to update when they next log in if it doesn't work properly you're going to have problems so what I say is going to the site going to pages and then do a block so add a new page and go into that page and just call that something like template or testing or whatever you like do not publish the page just um, visible for all users is fine but you're not publishing so no one's seeing it and we're, we're going to call this uh, template and then I'm just going to click add so what this is going to do now is create an unpublished page that we can preview and test before we add that block to the proper page to the live page and of course we if you're a pro and premium user you can save that block out if you're a free user you can copy the block code and then copy it into an empty block uh, guys if you want to get me to show you how to do that I can so now I'm inside here I can go and play around so I could create a three column three uh, column one row I could then add my image so I can go to my image I can go upload and then I can go and find that image which is actually in my downloads folder I think it's there there he is I can click open and I'm going to upload without crop or you can crop it but notice if I crop this it's going to be exactly the right ratio do you see that so I'm going to upload without crop it's going to pop into here now I've got this and now I can test things so if I'm going to a course I could put a button in here and of course I could go into that button go into the gear icon select a particular style like a rounded button here go back to here and uh, style it up a little bit more so I could then it is blue already which is not a bad color but I'm going to choose a darker color and let's put something like 34 in there and I'll change the padding a little bit because uh, I don't it's a little bit too much padding for me on these buttons uh, so I change the button a little bit there I go into the settings and I go join my course and that's probably a bit big now so I'm going to jump back into the style and quickly change this to 20 and there we go click save and now I can practice this so I can see where I want it to go to so say I want it to go to let's go to the good doggy site and just choose one of the courses um, it could be a course let's choose the anxiety course and so I take that link copy it jump back into the editor and then I can just go into the gear icon settings choose action go to link drop that inside there click save now I can preview this and test that it goes to the anxiety page so I can go preview that flicks up go join my course bang straight into the anxiety course so obviously it would be under a uh, another course name but you can see how you've done it in there so you then you can play around so it gives you the ability to go in here and maybe choose a background color for this if you wanted to let's choose something like a lighter color like this looks nice I might want to come into here and add a border I'll put add some a radius to that border I think I put about 12 in there let's put 20 in there and uh, let's put a border style of solid and then border width of 2 and I'll make it white so now I've got something completely different so I've got this kind of look going on now so I can now I've got that block I've tested it I have saved it gone back into the page notice that I've saved it and I've still got that preview page open so I'm going to hold the control key hold that control key hit the refresh button here and now this will update so now you've got this new look so you get it so it's perfect and it's looking good and then of course you can take the block and save this out so now I'm saving this out we're going to call this custom block okay and I click save to that and now I've saved it I can drop that into one of my other pages so if I've got another page let's go it doesn't really matter which page and I go to edit I can now drop that new block in there I'm just going to close these windows off whilst it's um, while it's loading up okay so while that's loading it's um it's going to load and then I can just drop that block straight in there so I've used a template page to that's unpublished to test how it's working and to play around to give them the ability to play around so now I've got that block I like the way it looks I can jump into the blocks go down to custom blocks and down the bottom here I should have this new block I can drag that block drop it into there and I'll just 
sometimes the color doesn't hold let's just go go in here and choose that color again something like that then I can click Save I can then visit that page preview that page this is a live page now so we're on this page and there we go click that and I'm going to go straight through to the anxiety so that's how you can do it you can actually work on temp what I call template pages to actually make things look good play around you're not rushed you know you haven't put it in the page you know the page is live and you've made a mistake and you're rushing to try and correct that mistake or change things you can just work nice and leisurely in an unpublished page you can then save that block and you can put it in there and by the way guys you guys that are using the free version you can do this so if you want to you can take that block code and you can put it in on the page I'm just going to go to edit this again and uh, inside here all I need to do is create an empty block let's just go up the top here and this will be the last one I do before Liz joins us so I'm going to be showing more top tips as well so I've got an empty block in there I'm going to go back to our template page sorry guys taking a while today here we go so now I've got this page open I can come into here and this is for people that haven't got the free that haven't got the pro or premium version and you can basically click in here press the control hold the control press a press the control hold the control press C and go back into here and we can go into the code here select all and do that and click save so I've pasted that code in there I've selected the old code deleted it out I've pasted the code from this page into here and I'm going to click save and bang there you go so it's done the same thing uh, sometimes it doesn't refresh properly there you go so that's how you can do it if you're using the free version um, as well so these are real time saving techniques I'm going to be after Lizzie's slot I'm going to be showing you more speed tips with Zenla so that's two big ones that's a template and then that is also using um, Canva to create that 1920 by 1080 and then use it for a multiple of different things in the platform. These are massive time savers for you guys. So uh, a little bit of a tip there. So I think we've got Liz joining us. <laughs> Hi Liz. So Liz will be popping up in a second. I think she can unmute. You should be able to unmute. Hey. Me. Hello. Hello. Sorry, my headphones. I just got them set to silence. I couldn't hear a word you were saying. <laughs> we got to learn sign language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mum's good at that, actually. She helps teach it, I think. So. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. yeah we so there's a resource if we need it. <laughs> <laughs> Might be quite good, actually. A little caption signing in the background. Yeah. But... Yeah, that could be good. Um, yeah, well, Liz is our newest member. She is the assistant uh, product educator here at Zenla. She's joined us. Uh, we've uh, we love her so much. Uh, she was on a day with Zenla last month. Um, she gives a real energy to the group. Of course, you know the male dominance is being shifted out now with Alice and now Liz. So we're getting a lot more harmonious so it's it's a good thing isn't it yeah perfect nice easy <laughs> balance <laughs> right lovely so liz i'm gonna let you take it away and uh yeah chat awesome okay hello to everyone who's watching um so i'm liz and i think some of you have seen me in the group already so i'm mum of four girls i've got three um, dogs, two Romanian rescue dogs and a Doberman. Um, and I'm a confidence coach, uh, animal Reiki and normal Reiki master teacher trainer. So I'm here to support you in all product education assistancing um, that I can do. And also to give, you know, as David said, give a bit of the energy. So share some of my energy with you all and support you with the Zen part of Zenna as well. So today I'm here to share with you um, about how to create the calm confidence to just do it. And what does calm confidence mean? 
so for me calm confidence has been a huge journey and i've had my ups and my downs um you know over the time where i've been building my own personal development my own confidence and for me it's to be able to just show up here as me so there's no worry about what anybody thinks i'm not thinking about anyone judging me because i know that I am myself, I'm comfortable as myself, and I'm able to just show up here and just speak with you. So for me, calm confidence gives me a freedom, gives me a freedom to speak freely, to be myself freely, and to speak out and say yes to opportunities, such as this awesome opportunity that I've got, being the product education assistant here at Zenla. It enables me to also say no to things that don't align with my own values, my own beliefs. And it gives me a real clarity so that each and every day I wake up, I know what my big mission is, um, and that's to support as many people as possible to create their own calm confidence, to choose to be themselves with anyone, anywhere, at any time, and take at least three minutes of daily self-care because when we look after ourselves, we're then able to go out and do the amazing work that we do within our Zen the platforms from a place where we're full. We're happy, we're content, we're looking after ourselves. And when we're taking care of ourselves, we're calm and confident within ourselves, we can show up and support everybody else around us to the absolute best of our ability. So I'm really grateful to be able to share some of my top tips and experiences with you guys here now. So the first thing when you're looking at creating your own calm confidence or building on your own calm confidence is to consider what is confidence for you? What does it give you? So I've shared some of the things that it gives to me. And for me, that overarching feeling is of freedom it's freedom to be to just be me for you to just be you and to know that whatever that means for you right here in this moment is awesome and absolutely perfect for you now right now doesn't mean that however you're feeling however confident you are right now is forever but however confident you are, however you're feeling right now is perfect for you in this moment. So the very beginning foundations of building on your confidence is to really know where you are right now. And then you can begin to create that freedom that the calm confidence gives you. And that freedom can free you up from energy because you get rid of any of the old worries, any of the old negativity, any of the old emotional baggage, the old limiting beliefs. And you are able to step into a new positive energy where you know that you are good enough to do whatever it is that you want to do. You are absolutely good enough to go create that course now. You're absolutely good enough to go live with that course that you've perhaps you know had sat there for a while just do it and as you create that calm confidence it gives you the energy and it also gives you the happiness and the motivation to just do it so when you are looking at your foundation on exactly how confident you are right now how you're feeling you know about doing things that perhaps you see as a little challenging how is your confidence, um, you know, sort of rated for you at the moment? And be really, really honest. Because there's no point fooling yourself. There, there's no point if it's something that you want to move on with, that you get to move on with, you get to increase your confidence. Absolutely be honest with yourself now on how you're feeling on how confidence is showing up for you on a daily basis. And it will be showing up on a daily basis because we get to speak with people every day. And how honest are you being when you're having those conversations? Do you really feel confident enough to say how you're really feeling within those different relationships, within those different communications and connections? 
And do you feel confident right now to push ahead and finish that next step of your new Zenda site, of your new Zenda work? Do you feel confident to do it? The next step is to then look at where you are now with your confidence and consider where do you want to be? What's your ultimate confidence, your ultimate calm confidence dream? Exactly how is it that you'd like it to be? How far do you want to move into calm confidence to be able to just do anything that you want whenever the opportunity arises? And really take a moment to visualize that. So consider, how do you want your calm confidence to be? How does it get to be so that you can just do anything, whatever it is that you want? And take a moment now, just close your eyes and really visualize that. And as you visualize it, I want you to notice what can you see in that perfect picture of your calm confidence. You're absolutely happy to just dive in and get it done. You're happy to just do it. And notice what can you hear? And what can you feel? What can you smell? And what can you taste? and really make that vision as compelling as possible. Really, really feel that calm confidence to just jump in and get it done. Just do it, get it completed. And then make sure that you put yourself into that image, into that vision, and then clear the screen and open your eyes. And what you can do is you can come back to that vision at any point to really give you the motivation to keep pressing forwards and create that calm confidence so that you can just jump at whichever opportunities you want to, so that you can get that course completed, so that you can send that funnel out, start getting people to know that you're there because you've got that calm confidence behind you so that you can just get it done because you absolutely can. And within this whole arena, there's so much support for you along the way. So draw on that vision and it may change. So your vision of how your kind of your perfect calm confidence looks will change it will develop over time so absolutely at any point it does just ask yourself again what do you want and then go back create a new vision and really pull in all of those senses and notice what you can see what you can hear what you can feel what you can taste and what you can touch. And as you're pulling each of those senses into that vision, it makes it really, really strong. And then just at the end where you make sure you can see yourself in the picture, you're then giving your unconscious mind something to work towards. So it's like, wow, yes, I want to feel that confidence. I want to be able to just get on and do whatever it is that I want to do. And by putting yourself into the picture, you're giving it something to aim at. It knows that you're not there yet because you're seeing yourself doing it. 
So it really helps to keep your unconscious mind just working in the background for you all the time, just building up that confidence. And it will be doing that silently for you, no matter what you're doing. It's always working in your favor. And I like the unconscious mind. It's, ah, it makes me think, you know, when you drive somewhere, and you get there and you're like, oh, how did I actually get here? Your unconscious mind has got you there because it knows that route. It knows it really, really well. So when you're pushing towards something and you're using visualization, really bring those visualizations up a lot. So you repeat it at least once a day. And I love to do mine in the morning first as I wake up, because then I know that that's going to be fueling me throughout the whole day, no matter what little activities and tasks I'm doing all the time. My unconscious mind is there working to my highest intention, just getting that job done for me. So use it because your unconscious mind is an amazing support for you and give it the information, feel it the information that you want it to be working on. And that's like a good point because when we've worked out where we are at the moment with our calm confidence, we've then had a look at what we want, where we want to be. So what we want to achieve by really working on and building up our calm confidence. The next stage is to bridge that gap. So what you get to do is have a look at where you are right now. Have a look at where it is you want to be with your calm confidence, with that feeling, that motivation to just get things done. And you get to set it up as some little stages. And what you want to be doing to start with is just working on, say, five simple beginning steps so that each step is going to be done in a day. So if you're perhaps working with your course, you're working on your New Zen the site, you may want to set, uh, to set just five little simple steps to be done over this week and get started today. So at the very least, get started with your plan of these steps and then you get to do your first little step. And these steps get to be small, they get to be measurable so that you know very clearly when you've completed it. And they also get to be achievable. So if you're just at the very beginning stages of your site design, don't expect to get it all done today. It gets to be just a small section, just the very beginning parts of it. And then what you're going to do with these little tiny steps is each time that you complete one, you're going to celebrate. So this will be um, the next task for you, which is to create um, a short list or a little mind map, a little voice note, a little picture of some small celebrations that you can do as you achieve each of these little small steps. And what that does is as you celebrate each of those completed small steps, it adds to your motivation to actually get the next step done. And it's again, it's just fueling you up with that excitement and that satisfaction of completing, completing the tiny sections. And you know, because you now have that big overall perspective that each of those tiny steps is working up to that big goal. So whatever that, that project, that goal, whatever was in your vision, you know what it is. And it's going to really be pulling you forwards as you complete each of the individual steps. And if planning is not something that you enjoy, get support. There are so many people, even within this amazing community, that can support you with doing those little plans. And it gets to be really simple. So if you're looking at just your first like five steps, they can be really small. So it could be coming up with, um, you know, the, the ideal client that you're going to be working with. It could be coming up with the name of the course. It could be coming up with the name of your webinar. And it gets to be small, achievable, measurable. And when you've completed it, you absolutely get to celebrate yourself because you're amazing. You're here, so you're obviously amazing. 
Um, and as you're looking for the support network, definitely look within the community. There's a huge amount of resources within the New Zanla so that there's so much that you can pull on. Um, but absolutely do not be overwhelmed. Focus on those tiny, small steps and stay in the step that you're in. So do not do it all at once. Stick with those five initial steps and get them completed. And then you get to look at your big goal and set your next five little steps and move forwards with them. And this is where the calmness of your confidence really comes into play, because I know you want to get everything done like yesterday, but it's OK. Things will wait for tomorrow. So give yourselves just the little steps to begin with, and then it will build up. And as you're completing each of those little steps, then your momentum is building up with you. So the momentum of your calm confidence is building, the momentum of your energy is building, and the momentum with whatever the project is that you're working on is building also. And what will happen eventually as you're moving along is that that begins to snowball in a really good way because that energy is then pulling you forwards to your next step as easily and effortlessly and efficiently as it possibly can. So go with that and just keep working on those little steps and absolutely be open to the opportunities of reaching out and asking people for support. Because as human beings, we love to help, we love to support, and that's not always necessarily appreciated. <laughs> um, you know, especially I remember when we had our first daughter and everybody was giving me advice on how to look after her. But it's because they're all coming from a positive place. They're all trying to help. They're all trying to support. But when you're looking out for your support, pick on people carefully so have a look and see who's an expert who's doing what you want to be doing really well and those are the people to be reaching out to so if you're going to be like modeling on someone else's um, kind of work someone else's expertise then absolutely pick people that who share your like beliefs and your values and whose work really flows with what it is you want to create. So obviously modeling is not copying. Modeling is having a look at what someone else is creating and then taking those skills and running with it in your own way. Because that's a huge part of the calm confidence is that you're creating your own things. You're going in your own path and you're going off at whatever angle it is that works for you. And within that, trust yourself. Another huge part of calm confidence um, for me is to trust yourself. And if something comes to mind, then explore it, like investigate how it is, but do make sure that it is fitting in with that big vision of your calm confidence, your completion, you're just getting things done, make sure that it's in alignment with that. And if it isn't, note it down and it's something you can come back to at a later date. Because I do understand it's very easy to be um, distracted by new shiny things and to run off in that direction. And that's why those simple five steps that you're going to be working on, working through all the time, really support you because it's going to make sure that you keep on track to what that big end goal for you, your calm confidence and your completion is so that you can get done whatever it is that you want to get done. Okay. And the next thing to really consider is if you've got your one step for the day and you get to the end of the day and you realize that you have not completed it, you get to be super honest with yourself about what has got in the way. So it's very easy for life to get in the way. And sometimes we have um, like work life, we have family life, we may have friends, we may have hobbies 
And there's a lot of different things that are on our plates at all times. And it's absolutely okay if sometimes the work comes like lower priority. So absolutely consider what your overall big life um, priorities, perspective and vision are. And some days the task for that day won't get done because something else has been a priority for you. And that's absolutely fine. You get to accept that. You get to acknowledge whatever it was that has got in the way so that the task has not got done. And then you get to just set it in for the next day or for the next appropriate time for you when whatever that new priority is, has got completed. And this is a point where you really get to be kind and patient with yourself because life does happen. And especially over the last couple of years, we've seen that things we never thought would be disrupted, you know, really have been. So absolutely, sometimes those five tasks for that week, they're going to shift and they're going to have to be moved forwards to a, a later point because something else has come in as a new priority. And again, like I said, be gentle with yourself, be kind, be patient. And also just acknowledge that you're a human being. And yes, work is hugely important. And if you're working within the New Zenla platform, then that work is very, very important to you. But there are other things that are important too. And you're a complete person. And part of your calm confidence and the getting things done is to know where to prioritize. So it may be on one day, you know, your kid may be sick from school or you may have to go and care for like a family member, then that's your priority. It absolutely gets to be your priority for that day. Your work tasks, people will understand, you will understand, especially if you're working for yourself, and you get to create yourself the space for the life that you want. And that's a massive part of your calm confidence is to be able to shift and to be able to move into whatever needs your energy, wherever you want your energy to go in that moment. And that's where that bit of self-care, that three minutes a day of self-care, like really comes into its full because you get to really connect into yourself on a regular basis. So every day, and that's going to enable you to really check in with your priorities and be able to shift them because it's it's your energy, you know, it's your day, it's your life, and it's your choice. And that's the other section of the calm confidence is that it's giving you choice, you get to choose. So it's completely up to you. If you want to do five tasks in a week, you want to do one task every week, you want to do, you know, three tasks every week. It's all up to you, it's your choices. And if it gets to shift for a week so that you get to go and have a nice holiday, get to have time away, relaxing, having good self-care, then that's great and that's perfect for you. So just be realistic in what you're setting your small tasks to be with what time you have available and always be willing to shift based on what your new priorities are. So it may be that you get a new massive client come in and so your your website or your new Zenla course it gets to shift into a different sense of priority because that new client becomes your priority and vice versa it may be that you decide that your priority becomes your new Zenla course your new Zenla site and something else shifts out of the way to make space for that so just be really honest connecting in with yourself seeing what your priority is, what your big vision is, and then from there, what your little goals are for the day. I feel like I went on a tangent there about the self-care, but it's really important. Um, and it's, you know, it's something that if we don't take care of ourselves, then these little steps don't matter because you get to have enough energy to be able to move forward every day. 
And the self-care is really giving you that energy. And it could even be one of the things that's getting in the way for you. So you may find that you haven't completed a task because you just didn't have the energy that day. You were feeling really exhausted because you've stretched yourself too far. And you've taken on too many things. And again, that's natural. As human beings, we often do it. And especially as, you know, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, um, you know, people working within this arena, we do tend to say yes, yes, yes to all this extra information. We pile a lot of stress and pressure on ourselves. So really take those moments to check in, see how you're feeling physically, emotionally, mentally, and if it's applicable to you also spiritually. And then you get to base all of those goals, all of those little steps around that for you. Because it may be that today, your priority may be self-care. It may be having a bit of a rest. It may be taking a break. And if you're hitting um, a point where you're feeling oh, just really overwhelmed, um, really frustrated with something, then just walk away. Take a step away from whatever it is that you're doing, so long as it's safe to do so, and then come back to it with a fresh pair of eyes. And a really simple way of doing that is just to step out of the room. And then if you need to come back in and just get on with whatever the task is, then do it. But that just stepping outside of the room really shifts your energy. And that can help give you extra confidence, extra motivation, extra energy to get that step done. So that's another of my quick top tips. Okay, so the next step is to remember that your unconscious mind actually takes everything personally. So you get to be careful about how you're speaking about yourself. So for example, if you are doing tired, um, say for example today, because it's Friday, and you've probably been working really hard, especially on all of your New Zealand stuff, really getting stuck in, and you may have pushed yourself a little far. But instead of saying, I am tired, which historically you may have said, you get to say, I'm doing tired. And what that really subtle shift does is it pulls you away from that behavior so that the behavior of tiredness is there, you're doing it, but it isn't all that you are, because obviously you're far more than just doing tired. You're far more than that. You're an amazing, unique individual. You have amazing, fantastic taste because you're here in New Zenma. And you are a member of a family. Whatever that may look like for you. You know, three of my immediate family members have fairy tales and four paws. So it can be whatever it is for you. And you're far more than just one behavior. So just remember that and be careful with how you're speaking about yourself because your unconscious mind is always listening. So if you're looking to build up your confidence, then you can even do like the positive affirmations where you repeat yourself, I am confident. And actually, if you give it a try right now, I am confident, you'll realize that you actually stand a bit taller. There'll be some kind of physical shift because your body is listening to you. So again, that's another quick tip to improve your, um, your calm confidence, your overall confidence, really any aspect of your behavior, of your beingness that you want to quickly, is just say it in that positive. So rather than historically saying, you know, about being unconfident, just say, I am calm and I am confident. And then to really boost that, that feeling and that state of mind easily, just then bring to mind, um, just imagine a moment when you were really, really calm and confident. A moment where you were doing calm confidence absolutely amazingly well. 
and just recalling that past moment where you were doing that calm confidence, you will feel absolutely calm and confident right now. And just lock that image in and clear the screen. Awesome, and come back into the room. So just by drawing on those old moments where you have felt whatever state it is that you're looking to feel. So here it's like the calm confidence to just get on and complete things, to really be motivated to get it done and to know that you can do it. Draw on those previous moments where you have felt like that. And there will be somewhere where you felt it. And very often it may be that you get to go back into a moment from your childhood where you felt that calm confidence to just show up and be yourself. So it could be really, really young. And there's a great um, sort of image that I have from my childhood that, you know, my mum's probably put into my head, actually. I'm not sure that I'm, um, I'm not sure I was old enough to, to properly remember it consciously, but it's of me as a little tiny toddler and I've got no teeth, I've got no hair and I'm walking up and down the bus just chatting and smiling to everybody that I see. Um, and it's just that calm confidence of just being you, of just showing up as yourself as unapologetically as you as possible. And as you do that, it opens your confidence and your opportunities to create and enjoy things are just infinite because you, you're just you and you're in flow of just being yourself, which is such a freeing place to be. We had um, just this week um, within, our, within our home, we had an amazing moment um, of calm confidence. We had two actually, um, one with our first Romanian rescue. And when we actually brought her home, she was so petrified of people. Um, we really didn't understand how petrified until we brought her home. But she was really, really scared of people. And whatever her sort of history of people had been, it had not been a positive um, thing. So she's been with us, um, well, for over a couple of years now. And we've given her the time and the space to just for her to build up her calm confidence in her own time. And for the first time this week, she actually walked out of our kitchen just completely on her own accord. Um, she just chose. She just went, yep now's the moment and she just strolled out there she walked around had a sniff at all the closed doors um had a sniff at my little five-year-old daughter that was sat on the bottom step at the time um I think she'd been being a bit cheeky so I think she was there as a right have a think about what you've done calm down um but it's that calm confidence and it can be shown through any any animals any beings any people and it's just to freely choose to do what you want to choose to do in that moment there's no worry there's no stress and that's where you get to move to so that whatever areas you're getting stuck in we get to build up your calm confidence so you're no longer stuck in them Okay, so, and then um, the other area of calm confidence that I wanted to speak about um, for, was with our little daughter. And she was saying the other day, oh, I can't draw people. And I was like, right, okay, you can draw people, but that's okay. And so she started to build her confidence up in other things. So we spent a good amount of time um, her doing things that she loves doing. So dancing, singing, going outside, playing, and just building up her confidence with things that she already loves. That's another top tip for you guys to do is to really draw on stuff that you already love doing, stuff that you are confident at, and consider what aspects of yourself are really being used in those moments and draw on them. Because you may find that just before you do a hobby, such as like running or playing tennis or doing judo, karate, anything, cooking even, you probably notice that 
just before you do whatever that activity is, you'll be feeling in a specific way. And it could be that you're really calm and you just, you know that you can do it. And so the secret is to take those feelings and then use a visualization, use any techniques that you have to get yourself into that state before you begin to do something that you're not feeling so confident to do right now. And by getting into that calm state, you really have that lovely calm confidence to get on and complete the job really easily and effortlessly. Um, okay, and then I've got two more things just to share with you. So when you're facing something that you're feeling unconfident with, just have a think of these four questions. What wouldn't happen if you did it? What would happen if you did it? What wouldn't happen if you didn't do it? And what would happen if you didn't do it? And as you complete each of those questions, you can do it in a little quadrant. Um, so it got, it's quite messy, but it's just this top bit here. So you've got your four questions. And when you've done that and you've answered them, it's going to give you a really good perspective on whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever it is that you're feeling a bit unconfident about. And then last and final thing that I'm going to share with you um, is that when you're looking at something that you're not feeling very confident about doing, that you perhaps have got some hesitation of getting completed and you're worrying about whether you can do it or not, is to take a moment to just visualize how it's going to be 15 minutes after the successful completion of that activity, of that project, whatever it is. And again, when you're bringing that visualization to mind, just add in all of your senses. So notice what you see, notice what you hear, notice what you feel, what you taste and what you can touch and really get into those feelings, the excitement, the relief, the happiness of completing whatever that, that task is. And again, as you're seeing it as done and you're seeing it as 15 minutes after it being done, it can really help support you to be motivated to get it done. And again, just has your mind working for you in the right ways. Okay, so that was my final top tip on the calm confidence to just getting things done. Um, and just remember that the whole team is here to support you. The whole community is here to support you. Draw on the resources, draw on the expertise of all of the people here. Um, and just go do it. Oh, it's brilliant, Liz. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I think that's a really, really um, good subject as well because people do get overwhelmed with things and, and they put too much pressure on themselves. I know I do. Um, I've done it. I, um, you know, I took, up, I took up surfing just because of that. I just needed to... It's a good way to get away from everything. Some people play guitars, you know, read a book. Um, you need that time to switch off. Um, and sometimes I, if I'm struggling, I will not work on a project. I will, I will sleep on it. And in the morning, it all becomes easier. But like you said, life, you know, things get in the way. You've got, you've got to look after yourself first. That should always be the priority because if you're not looking after yourself, then you're not going to get anything done because <laughs> you're going to be ill. And uh, you also want to, when things pop up as well, I almost think of it like a river. Um, you know, rivers flow, they flow nicely down the river, nothing's getting in the way, but when there's a storm, there's trees blow into the river. Um, and the river deals with those things. It, it gently, over time, pushes those obstacles out of the way and then you can carry on. So that's how I kind of look at it. Um, that sort of helps me. But there's, you definitely need to do those things. You need to calm yourself down. And um, yeah, another nice little therapy session there, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, I thought I'd go with my sort of my key topic. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a good one. <laughs> it's a good one, yeah. So Liz is going to be, that's a brilliant one. I'm sure there's going to be lots of pictures, lots of um, uh, posts coming in there. So Liz will keep an eye on anything that comes in if you've got any questions for her and things. But you're going to see a lot of Liz. So uh, there's lots of things going to come come along. And uh, yeah, be gentle on, on Liz. But she is, you know, she's a professional course creator. She's been using the platform and um, she has... You know, that's why we love getting people from the group themselves, because you guys are using it. Uh, we we don't go outside of the platform because if we did, those people would have to learn the platform anyway. So why not just go from our lovely community and, uh, you know, pick people that are working. We also look and that's another big thing as well is that people that help each other's. Because, you know, there's a lot of people in the community, Liz being one, like help other people throughout and they're not asking anything in return. And that shows their mindset and that they love the platform. And that's what we want. We only want people on the platform that love the platform um, and are just interested in helping other people rather than self-interest, which is a completely different thing. So... Liz is fantastic for this. Obviously, she gives the energy and the calm, which we all need. So, uh, yeah, I'll be going to Liz for some therapy sessions, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Alice has had a few from me. <laughs> <laughs> She's been talking me down. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liz. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so give liz the thumbs up um if you're watching this on replay as well um she'll she'll be around and looking at the chat and things like that but um yeah we're nearly at the end of the first session and uh yeah i'm just going to finish off a few things and uh then i'll see you again at three o'clock so thank you very much liz thank you see you later, <laughs> see you later. bye <laughs> all right wonderful okay so uh we did have a question coming from um was it maria i think it was maria sorry i'm just going to flick everything back up so i can see what's going on uh maria was asking about uh no it wasn't maria it was do, 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 do. um someone was asking about emails and seeing who had unsubscribed now it's really hard for me to do that because um, I'd be showing you live email addresses if I was to do this live with you. But trust me, it is really, really easy to do. So I'm going to cover that at the end of about 4.30. I'm going to be covering that. I'm going to be showing you some screen grabs with blurred out emails. So you can see exactly where to go so you can filter through. But in a nutshell, if you go to all your broadcasts, your email broadcast, and you click on, say, on the right-hand side, if you sent one out, you click on Opened. Just click on that little envelope icon and what you'll see is um, you'll see all the people that opened your email. Now on the right hand side there's a little filtering option where you can go down to um, not opened or unsubscribed and you can filter those people out and you can also export them out as well. So it's really easy to do. I'm going to be showing that in the afternoon. So uh, that's what we're going to do there. So I want to finish up now. We've got... Um, a few minutes left and I want to carry on with the speed tips because uh, we all like to be a bit quicker with the things that we're doing with this stuff but not rushing but just being quicker so we already looked at the Canva template and we looked at how you can use a blank page as a template so I want to jump into the next thing now which is like planning your stuff because this can really help you what you do not want to do um, and I'm guilty of this as well, but um, you know I know the platform, so I'm working in it, and I do save stuff off. But what you do not want to do is work on even a templated page for all your copy and stuff. This should all be done in advance. So I'm going to show you an actual sheet that we've done for um, the YouTube challenge, which is coming out on the 7th of March, and that will sort of give you an idea of um, what you should be looking at doing for this kind of thing. So I'm just trying to find that um, course as it's uh, somewhere, where is it? So bear with me guys, there it is. All right, All right I'll be sharing my screen in just one momentum. Okay, 
Right. Okay. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger as well so you guys can see it because it's a bit small. Zoom in a bit here. Okay. So this is for a YouTube challenge, but it's the principle is the same just for any page content or anything. So I'm going to share this uh, little document I've got here. So this is what I do. I always put together like a notepad or a word pad and I just begin to fill information out. So this particular one is, is specifically for YouTube, but this could be for a website page. Um, I've got certain things in here for um, YouTube that limits you to 5,000 characters, for instance. So that, you know, ignore that bit. The main point here is that I've written all my content out inside of this document so this is really good because I've got the content on my on my desktop you know I've got it I can pull this content straight into a page and it's going to save me a lot of time I can also do use spell checking software through it as well before I actually put it into any of the posts so setting up a text document of some kind is is definitely a must um, to the point also where you're planning things as well so not only that you know you could plan how your site how your site works so you could put in here site map and then you could put like home page and then maybe I want an about us page and then you can split that up into here and then you could write the, the content for um, home and then you could put blah 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 and then you could put the content for um, about and then again you could put blah 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 so you can fill that out and get that all pre-prepared without even actually going onto the platform itself so you've got all that you've got it all down there now what is the benefit of doing that there's a, there's a few benefits one it is quicker one you can speed check it and another thing is that you could use some of that copy inside of any videos or social media posts that you're using so you can quickly come into like um, social media posts I could take that copy I could copy that from this document not having to go into the website and I could paste that straight in to the uh, social media post like if it was Facebook or, or wherever or Twitter then I can reuse that content so having a master sheet that you're working working to can save you a lot of time moving forwards. Um, some people also like if you're designing your site out you might want to do what Liz did there and use a kind of mind map thing where you're just doing where what you want people to go or use a flow of people through it but whatever you're doing you can plan all this stuff you know you can sit down with a coffee on the couch and just have a little scrap of paper and just be writing it out and Gen generating ideas because we all get ideas you know it's like one of those things that's another thing as well when you're usually the best ideas that pop in your head are when you're not actually working on a project you might be out having I don't know some um, fish chowder or something which is what I'm gonna have tonight and I might be sitting there and I might have I might have a thought about something just that maybe a a line a title or an idea about a new project or something as I always have a little scrap of paper on me and I'll always just jot it down um, and that way you can pull all those resources because probably in the daytime you probably generally on a day day-to-day -day day basis you probably have about 10 different ideas for things that pop in your head but most of the time you push them away and you don't think about them and then they're forgotten and they could be really good bits of information to draw on. So if you've always got a little pad or something or a little tablet, just jot it down. I don't mean do it all the time, but if a real good one comes in your head, write it down because it will be forgotten. So by playing, planning these things out and having like a text document, maybe some paper, and then getting back and putting that into the document, it can be a real time saver later. And this is before you even go into the Zenla platform. So that is my speed tip number three so we're going to move on to speed tip um what have we got uh doo -doo -doo -doo. oh yeah speed tip number four so speed tip number four is up to here is multi-page editing so uh what i like to do is i like to just let me just save this page out if i'm working on a few pages generally you kind of are um, so I'm working on this page this page this page um, what I like to do because it takes a little while for the page editor to load up is I like to just start to open my pages so I go into um, edit 
and it'll open in a new tab. And then what I'll do is I'll go to another page and I'll open that up in a new tab. Now I don't generally do more than three, but if you open these tabs up, you're gonna see they're spinning, okay? So the great thing about it is one of them will spin, normally the first um, page that you opened up. And uh, you could go off, get a cup of coffee, you know, I don't know. You could have a sip of water, you know, whatever. But you're gonna notice that these are starting not to spin anymore. What does that mean? It means I can now jump in, I can edit my copy, save it, close it, go into the next page, edit my copy, save it, close it, and go into the next page. And if you get a system going where you're editing these pages, you can start to go through these pages and add more. So you can just go into here, and I've got now two more, so I can be editing this page and uh, putting all this stuff in here, and when I finish with it, likely chances are I'll be more than three or four minutes. These pages will have loaded. So it means I can jump through. So now I can jump into this page, change this. Now I can jump into this page. So am I waiting at all for those pages to load? No. So a lot of people open a page up, they do their changes, they save it, close it, go back here, or they'll save it and they'll go in here and they'll go through all the pages and then they'll go, right, I wanna change that one next. And you're waiting. Now I'm waiting. I've got to wait for it to load. Waiting, waiting, and waiting. And now I can start work. And now I can save it. And then I click the next page. And then I'm waiting, waiting. Whereas if I just have these pages all open, um, I can do this really quickly. So I can be working on one of these pages here. And like I said, I can just go in, I can click this page, I can go, oh, I'm gonna edit that page as well. And then I'm gonna go down and edit that page. And then I can come back to here, do all my changes in here. And then when I'm finished, these three pages will have loaded. So this then eliminates that problem where people are posting on Facebook group, it takes ages for the editor to load, etc, etc. Because I'm just doing it this way and this is a really quick way of doing it. I've got three pages open there and took about the same time as one page to open. So you can really speed up your workflow. When I'm working on sites, I do this all the time. It just makes things really, really quick to work within the platform. So I'm going to jump back to the Facebook group and see if anyone's got any questions based on that. So I noticed that you had a spell checker working while you're creating automations in your videos. Where can I get that? Uh, good question, Jim. Uh, yeah, I do. I have Grammarly um, installed. So if you go into your browsers, um, let me just... So Grammarly is actually installed under, hold on, extensions, okay. So uh, yeah, let me just share my screen quickly. I'm not, I think I turned it off because it was causing a problem with the email editor, but uh, um, let me just share my screen again. Uh, share, so if you put in here um, Grammarly, now this is in Chrome, by the way, um, you go to Grammarly, uh, you can sign up and install that. So you can download Grammarly, it's free. And then it'll go in your little bar. The other way you can do it is go down to more tools, down to extensions. And inside here, you can see I've got Grammarly installed, but you could type in here, uh, Grammarly, and it would appear. And then you could, because you haven't got it installed, you could click it installed. There's lots of great um, extensions inside here as well. Um, there's a few bits I've got going on there, but uh, have a look at extensions for Chrome because there's quite a lot of different ones. And some of them might be really useful for you. Um, depends on what you're using it for, but that's Grammarly, uh, Jim. So hopefully that helps you. And that will then spell check as you're working through. Uh, one word of advice, I wouldn't turn it on all the time. Like if you're doing email broadcasts and you're doing any kind of coding in there, it can mess the coding up. And that's why I deactivated it for the tutorial site, for the good doggy site, sorry. So that's how that works. So that is my speed saving tips for Zenla. So hopefully you like them. So I wanna also talk about later on, I wanna talk about um, how we can test as a student. I want to do that. I'm going to be showing screenshots of uh, filtering for 
people that haven't clicked in emails that you sent out. I'm going to be showing that at about 4:30-ish uh, today, after um, Marcy has finished um, her presentation, and after Alice as well. So. Alice is coming up at three o'clock, so it should be an interesting one. She's on for about an hour. Uh, we've had a busy day today, so I want to thank you, Kevin, and I want to thank you, Liz, for taking part in session one. And uh, we're going to have a lot more stuff going on with David Zender. I'm still trying to sort things out with some external people to actually come on and do some presentations. So I want to get that all in place and start to have um, people that are doing some of the integrations for Zenler come on and give you a kind of uh, masterclass on certain points, certain things as well. So again, if any of you want to be on a day with Zenla, you know where to go, tutorials.newzenla.com, go to the forms, join us for a day with Zenla, and then fill it out, and then you can come on live. So that brings us kind of like to the end. I think we've got two minutes left. I'm going to check the questions again. So keep spotting, all right, thank you. So Jim keeps spotting errors after, yeah, well, don't we all, Jim? We do. Um, yeah, thank you, Liz. Uh, so... Any more questions in here? Just check final. Yeah, lots of questions there. For, so yeah, it was a, right. Yeah, so you're liking the idea about a workshop that Kevin was talking about today. So we'll um, I'll talk to Kevin about that. And lots of. Congratulations to Liz on there. Yeah, you'll be seeing a lot more of her on, on the channel for sure. So we're not going to tell you what yet, but you've got, we've got some exciting things coming up for um, support. Trying to again push the support to the best it can be. So um, yeah, and of course, you know, guys, you've got any ideas for us on education, any other things you'd like to see happening from an educational point of view on the platform, always let us know. We take it all on board and it can push us in new areas. So, you know, definitely get in touch. You know, at the beginning, we covered all the educational area. So you know where everything is. You know about all the um, courses that are not in the NZ Masterclass bundle, such as a YouTube challenge and Kevin's um, Zen Chat networking, which is amazing as well. So you want to get in on those. If you've not taken part, just see what it's like. Pop in there, see if you like it, see if it's it's for you. If it's not for you, you don't have to go again. But um, knowing about it and and actually taking part in these things, it might give you more ideas on this sort of stuff. So I'm going to finish now. It's 12 o'clock. I'm going to end the video for this session, session one with A Day with Zenla. We'll be back at three o'clock with Alice to kick things off. And uh, yeah, have a good rest of the day. See you in about three hours time. And uh, yeah, take care. Bye.